No, man. Why are you talking to me and I got a microphone on, man? No, I didn't bring that today, bro. You bring it, son? No, oh, son. That only comes in on Mondays, man. Oh, okay. Mondays and Fridays. BLS yeah. 107.5. Chuck, chill out. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you're welcome, sir. Very good, <laughs> Very good job. All right. Big, big shout out to Venus Shield. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you also got to shout out Georgie Sweet. Yeah, Georgie Sweet. Lower yeah. East Side, yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah. Right birthday. there. Also, yeah. DJ Tall Guy. Oh, well, yeah, DJ Tall Guy. What's from, wrong with you? From you don't town of the Bronx. Oh, well, you know, you wrote it down. I didn't. I did, but, you know, usually your memories is yeah, all right, man. My, my mind is somewhere right? else right now. Oh, big man. shout to Kendra and her Jets. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The Eagles, wow. all the way, baby. That's right. That's right. But why, why are you pulling our headphones, man? What you get ready to <laughs> Slow down. Hey, listen, hey. Listen, listen, listen. Your show was in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. It's a legendary shut chill out. Chill. I got to mess with him, man. You know what I'm saying? Party, no question. No yeah, question. No, no question. Yeah. That's, that's cool. You know, he's playing you cricket. legendary, man. You playing, that? playing crickets and everything in the background. Well, Artie's got some stories, man. I'm going to make yeah, him tell one of them that he told me the other day in here before oh, they right. get on. Yeah, yeah. He's got right. some stories. Stories to tell that brother. Yeah, right straight, there. straight from Philly, man. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There you go. Well, that's why the experience is about to jump off, too. Right. Right. Today, of course, Artie from the experience. When he's going to come in here and get it cracking. <laughs> You got on the LL Cool J shirt today? It's the GOAT, just like you, man. Yeah. Wait a minute. What, y'all dissing him not that long ago? No, no, I wasn't. Hey, you man. wasn't. Oh, no, I, okay. got, I got love for Whoa. I got love for LL. Did you see Artie get serious? Yeah, he just I, looked at me and said he was grinning at first. He said, no, no, I, I wasn't. I got love for my man. I got love for my man. So I, I have no beef with nobody. I love That's right. LL. He's my favorite rapper. My That's favorite right. comedian is Steve Harvey. We all got love. <laughs> That's right. Do our thing. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Very right. good. Very good. man, Steve, stop leaving water in the room, man. Oh, that was a Steve. Steve Harvey can do whatever he wants. No leaving around the turntables, money. One fifty-one. The time to go. Oh, it was a pleasure. Right? Oh. It was a pleasure. Chuck, man, put that away, man. You ain't supposed to have that, man. Yeah, yeah, you got warrants, don't you? Got warrants? Mr. Mark Jordan, can't clap for Mr. Mark Jordan. Boston's finest. Boston's finest. Boston. Wait, they call they, they call me Arthur. <laughs> Arthur. Yeah, Arthur why, why, yeah. why does everybody sound like that a bit? Boston. Oh, it's a regionalism, man. I mean, I don't know. I, you know who has the perfect Queens accent? Everybody told me. Ooh. Let's give a big shout to Vinnie Brown. Yes. For real. Yes. Yes. And when Vinnie goes off, oh. it's right there. It's right there. Yeah. I didn't know folks from the, the Queens dialect was like that, but All they right. said if you want to hear it, talk to the man. All right, he's All in right. the back. He's in the back. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, he could be in the front that's in a second. That's the we big guy here. I'm the big dog. For real. Oh, see, he just blasted this up right here. No, wrong one. Wrong one. That was my one. Right. Now, what is that? Who's that? Easy. All right, 152. Time to get out of here, y'all. We done lingered a little bit too long. And uh, thanks again, Chuck, for the mix. Brought to you by Choice Hotels. Wendy Williams up next. Please remember that a thousand dollars in cash coming up at five fifteen. No cut, question about cut it. The check, cut BLS. the check. Cut, cut the, the check. check. All right. Have a good afternoon, y'all. Take care. And now we're pleased to bring you our feature presentation.
doing this for years. Baby Barber Shop, <laughs> beauty salon, beauty salon. Who the world is this? I'm so much business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again and again, <laughs> when, 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 when you bring your name up, a lot of you haters scared to death. Scared to death. Scared to death. She had it again. Yeah. When, 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 when you, she had it the way. When, 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 when you, when you, she back and she stay. When, 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 when you, when you, the ain't playing. Ain't playing. Ain't playing. Play. I like the Okay, everybody. I love that you're here most of the time. I know that there are, um, I, you know, and it's hard for me to even expect you to be here every single day. I know you have a life, <laughs> although I wish your life was just four hours a day right here. Alas, that's not a perfect uh, world, and it's not a perfect world that we live in. But anyway, um, listen, welcome to the show. Today, we're going to do a lot of gossiping. Ron Isley, for those of you who love Prince and ask me about him all the time, I've got a Prince update for you. We'll talk about the new actor on Desperate Housewives, who plays Matthew, you know, son of the man who lives in the basement, or whatever their relationship is. Anyway, his name is Makad... Brooks, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And Puffy, Jay-Z, and Irv Gotti, I got a transcript, and it's still going down regarding um, Murder, Inc., you all. So we'll talk about that, too. And, um, oh, we've got guests coming in during the Hour of Truth. We'll be briefly talking with the authors of a new book called Fab. It's like the Sex in the City. Remember, they were supposed to come in last week? Mm -hmm. Karen, um, Karen Bates-Morrow and Tracy Rochelle High. They are the authors. They will be in. During Advice Hour, we're going to talk about a plethora of things. But for those of you who are aspiring model, models slash video whores, video girls, video women, video ladies... There is an artist who needs you to be a part of his video. So I'll give you all that information. And um, ugh, just, it is what it is, people. <laughs> Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Hey, hey, hey. What's a hopping then? All right, well, the good news is that the fax machine is, is working today. Um, it's barely working. So maybe, you know, take that number that I gave you yesterday and tuck it in your bra or something and, and just pull it out. Um, maybe one day next week it'll be broken down. I've already put in for a new fax machine. Actually, I haven't. I totally forgot. I swear I have mothers. You know, ever since I had the baby, I, you know, and they call it, and it's like a joke, mother's memory, which means you remember stuff for two seconds and then you're on to remembering something else. And then it doesn't help that it's been raining for like 25,000 days. You know what I mean? So internally, I feel like I'm asleep. Ugh. Every day is a hustle. Mm -hmm. So Ron Isley, I see, is um, on trial in Los Angeles to answer questions about tax evasion. Well, this has been going on for a while. It seems like, you know, years ago that we found out that Ron Isley was a tax evader. But um, he's accused of demanding fees in cash for his concert dates and making it difficult to determine uh, how much his upfront tour fees were. So, it's not exactly like he hasn't paid taxes on what they could see. They're trying to determine what it is that they can't see. Um, he's also being he's also standing accused of uh, abusing his his own benefit royalty checks. And those, they say, were issued to other Isley brother related enterprises. Um, apparently, um, some of those payments were made to his late brother, O'Kelly. So the prosecutors say that um, Ron Isley used the funds to buy a yacht and two mansions in Missouri. And he pled not guilty to five counts of tax evasions and one count of failing to file a tax return. Um, if he's convicted, old man Isley could go to jail for 26 years. In the meantime, Patty LaBelle has been found guilty. 
What do you want me to say next? Come on, we can go any way you want with this one. We can go any way you want. Jeez, this is Patty. <laughs> I know. Everybody's auntie. Friend to the show. Yes. Alas, she's been found guilty. Uh-oh. Of keeping a dog kennel too close to the edge of her property. Upsetting her neighbors there in, in Pennsylvania. Patty's dogs bark all damn day and night, disturbing the neighbors. It's a quiet neighborhood. She was cited for the same thing in 2001 and 2002. And she plans to appeal. Well, we've already been to court regarding the Hogans and their pets. Do we really have to deal with this? Did you see that, um, th- that episode of the Hogans with the pets? Did you see Sweet 16 last night, Gerald LaVert's daughter? I didn't see. <laughs> is, she, is she heavy? I didn't see it. I'm just guessing. Oh, well, you just <laughs> assuming that it runs in the family. Sorry. Oh, well, I didn't see it. I was at the Laugh Factory. Shout out to everybody who was there. It was raining buckets, and we still had a pretty damn decent crowd. Yeah. Did the, the bomb turn up? No, I did not, the bomb stripper did not turn up, but um, and neither did Artie Life for the Party, ironically, Goose. Well, only to find out. I had to do my recollection memory, and I remember when Artie and I, because we have our show meeting in the elevator leaving here every night (laughs) as I cross the street. As the attendant brings my car up, it's like, meeting adjourned. Okay, see you later. (laughs) And Art last night was rushing off, uh, not to get chiefed before the Laugh Factory, but to some sort of audition. Is that okay that I say? I don't know anything more about it. So, you know, Art is a frustrating, uh, frustrated actor. Why am I frustrated? Because I know that's what you really want to do. And I, and I, no, and no, 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 no. I like doing this. No, no, no. I don't expect that you'd leave this to do yeah, that. Yeah. I expect that you'd do both. In addition. Right, in yes, addition. Yes, yes. But there's nothing wrong with being a frustrated, uh, you know, because you want that. It's like I'm a frustrated uh, TV star. Right. This is my main thing. You know, I could take or leave that over there. But as long as you're going to express interest, I want to do the damn thing and I want to do it to the best of my ability. And damn it, you know, don't take me for granted if we're going to do it. Oh. You, you take acting classes, right? Well, I did. I've just completed them. I've just completed them. Right. right. And now you are auditioning. I'm, I'm, I'm on the, the, the pay, pound the pavement. And and Art is constantly auditioning, come to find out. You know, this this was, this slipped out during one of our meetings. He's like Joey. Yes. Ooh. Like Joey? From Friends. Oh, Good analogy, Goose. I never partic- I never expected you to be a Friends watcher. <laughs> wow. How you doing? <laughs> Art, do not spit green tea all over the room. No, 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 no. Yes, he is. You are like Joey. Like, this is your day job. You love this. This is what you're going to keep. Well, I take it seriously because I tell them to only line my auditions before work and after work. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and if I got anything, it would have to be something in the morning or after this job. Yes. Yeah. So he, Art got a call back, and he was rushing, rushing across the street, practically lifting me off the sidewalk, getting me to my car, throwing me in there with my bag and stuff, because he was he was rushing to a callback. He got a callback. Can't, we can't keep the right man waiting. Yeah. And so I figured that he'd probably keep you waiting, and you missed your curtain call at the club last night. They didn't see me till 11.30. Wow. So you did not see Gerald LaVert's daughter. No, no, I didn't. On, um, on, sweet, no, I didn't. <laughs> on sweet 16. Well, Nicole, my trusty assistant, thank you, Nicole. Nicole was watching, and Nicole said it was nothing to crow about. Like, there was no big personality or anything. She was nothing like CeeLo's daughter. Uh, maybe you all saw, if, I don't know if you have your two cents, but what I'm waiting for is L.A. Reed's son. Because the word uh, over at MTV, which I got the word leak, L.A. Reed's son is going to be the next Sweet 16 um, star. So that that's real money doing real things. Yeah. Now, I know Gerald LeVert makes money, but what Nicole was telling me is that it didn't look like real money doing real things. You know, when they put these Sweet 16s on, we're expecting something over the top. But it's just like over the weekend, I was watching Sweet 16, and there was a, um, um, a girl um, of some sort of Asian descent or whatnot from Staten Island. Um, and her mom couldn't even come up with the $14,000. They're biting nails the day of it. I mean, she ended up coming up with a $14,000, you know, balance for the catering hall or whatever. But but homegirl, the 16-year-old, she's in getting her hair done and her nails done. And, and, and they're talking about, I don't even know if this is going to happen. My mother's over there right now. She's, you know, trying to get the money together. Well, excuse me, MTV, don't accept people to be on this show if they have to struggle to get the money together. And also, another thing, if their houses look anything like normal... That girl over in Staten Island, her house didn't look nothing like special. Her mom didn't rep nothing like glamorous, special, and full of money. 
As far as I'm concerned, this little girl was spending money the family doesn't have. Like, like this show, Sweet 16, is for fantasy. Don't you watch that for fantasy? Like something that you didn't have when you were 16, that, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to give your kids when they're 16. Or maybe if you're on your grind right now, maybe you didn't have it, but you're going to make sure your kid has it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the girl on Staten Island was doing. MTV, you're slipping. And and Nicole, my trusty assistant, she said she couldn't even get a handle on where um, Gerald Levert's daughter lived. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So there was nothing, there was no fabulous house. She did get a Mercedes, but she wanted a CLK or something like that. She just got the regular Mercedes. A Mercedes is a Mercedes when you're 16. Hell, when you're an adult. <laughs> Be grateful. All right, so um, about Prince. They say that Prince is facing painful surgery. Remember the other day I was telling you um, about Prince doing splits and cartwheels through his whole career. And now, you know, he's, he's uh, 47 years old. And you got to expect that this stuff is going to catch up with you and cause you a little bit of discomfort. Well, apparently, and, and art, probably the heels as well. Yes. yes. Well, uh, little, the little man Prince is thinking twice about a full hip replacement because he's Jehovah's Witness. However... A full hip replacement is what the doctor's order is. Damn, you know, you know, not, it's not until like you're 90 years old. Yeah. My uh, great grandmother who passed away while I was helping her on the commode years ago, I watched her. I told you her, her, her head knocked down and her teeth jutted forward. And I said, Grandma, Grandma. Oh. Yeah. And she dearly departed at that point. But, you know, she had had a hip replacement and she was like, you know, not, I mean, old. Mm -hmm. But Prince at 47, a full hip replacement. Wow. He's against blood transfusions because that's the Jehovah's Witness way. Wasn't there something about a child born with Mai Tai and the child needed, had special needs and allegedly it was this Jehovah's Witness thing and the beliefs that kind of got in the way of the child. So the child, and so then Mai Tai and Prince ended up... What, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they try to promote the bloodless surgery thing. Would do, would you let your religion get in the way of saving your life or your child's life? That is absolutely the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Hey, listen, little man. If you need the hip replacement, mm. oh no, it is time. How many seconds do I have? I wanted to talk about this lady in Arkansas who gave birth to her sixteenth child. Oh. All right, everybody. We'll keep it here. I'm taking your phone calls and we're talking because uh, that's what we do here. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Frightful, Wendy. It's Wendy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me at home and I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So, what should I tell her? Just... It, tell us how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. One hundred seven point five WBLS with the return of the one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee. Backed by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand thousand dollar winners throughout the day. Set your radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at seven fifteen a.m. Then listen for Steve again at twelve fifteen, and then again at five fifteen. Be the tenth caller, and you're an instant winner. That is crazy. It's a $107,000 cash guarantee on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. I think that that Gary Bird has an incredible voice. And maybe it's just because I think that he's an incredible person. And I don't talk to him a whole lot, but that, that was his voice right there. Just whenever Gary is in the room, I always feel as though somehow there's a bit of maturity and level-headedness. And, and everything's going to be all right. Isn't it crazy you can get that just by somebody's aura? I don't know the man. But I I know all I need to know. Today's R&B and classic soul. He's got a great voice and a great aura. Um, anyway, everybody, welcome to the Wendy Williams experience. Loosen up a bit. The rain is going to be ending by sa Saturday. Then Saturday is going to be a beautiful day. Shout out to everybody in Newark on Saturday. I am hosting an, a really um, high-energy fashion show over at the Robert Treat Hotel. 
So I expect to see a lot of you all there on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, don't forget today I'm around... Um, Around 525. You know, I know everybody else does it on the 15, 715 for um, Steve Harvey and 1215 for the fabulous Mike Jordan midday show. Uh, but I can't do it at 515 because I'm in the middle of a national talk break and then everybody else will be trying to poach on your money when really this contest is for WBLS, you know, listeners. And you'd be all mad if somebody called in from Chicago and won the money. So that's why I wait until I go into the break and then I'm local with just you guys and then um, we give away the money. So it's part of our $107,000 cash guarantee. Make sure that you're here today. Oh, about 525. Look, it is what it is. About 525. And listen for the Steve Harvey cue to call in and win. Let me talk to you about LA weight loss. Okay. I had a hard boiled egg this morning. I'm not on LA weight loss anymore, but I am maintaining my weight loss. And today, um, um, I had a hard boiled egg. Um, what else did I have? Oh, I had a Weight Watchers. It wasn't Weight Watchers. It was something, or, it was some sort of diet uh, ice cream sandwich. Right before I was leaving the house today, I like to eat in the car. You know, I could take two seconds and eat there in the kitchen, but I like to bring it in the car and eat. And and I also like to eat on the radio, which is terrible, but I do. And so I just placed an order for some sushi. I'm maintaining my uh, weight loss. Is there weight that you need to lose? I know the holidays are coming. You're probably thinking about it. Maybe you want to start the new year with a new outside shell. I know you're beautiful inside, but, you know, let's work on on, on the rest of it. And L.A. Weight Loss can certainly help you out. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. I don't know about you. I'm I'm on thyroid medication, so I can't take a lot of pills. You know, um, if you're on heart medication, thyroid medication, or whatever it is that you know you do, you might be wondering. Of course, check with your doctor first. But I can tell you right now, there is no pill popping on L.A. Weight Loss. That's one of the main things that attracted me to L.A. Weight Loss. That and the shrink. Oh, because the weight loss shrink. Please. You could talk to the shrink. I mean, one second you'll be talking about your weight loss. Next, next second you'll be talking about your man or, or your mother or your mother-in-law or whatever. And they listen. Because, you know, it's, it all works its way around somehow to your weight. It, somehow it does. So just call when you get a chance. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss. And you can tell them that I told you to go. Uh, you know, that, that's a safe one. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's LA Weight Loss. I have something for you to win right now. Who wants to win a $100 gift pack courtesy of Dr. Miracle's brand new uh, thermal cuticle intensive no lie relaxer system, leaving your hair soft and shiny and ready to be styled? That was a mouthful, right? Would you like to win that? (laughs) Wendy, what'd you say? You heard me. I said a $100 gift pack from Dr. Miracle. Uh, okay, well, caller number 10 is going to win right now. And from what I understand with the faxes, the way it's going is that every third or fifth fax is getting stuck in the fax machine oh. today. So, Art, yes. can you please make a note? We, we really do need to order a new fax machine. Don't let me get Steve Harvey on it and Mark Jordan in on this and champagne and stuff. Yeah. You know, because we can really gang up on management with this one. The fax machine is dying. Yes. But who do I talk to? A really slow death. Dion Livingston, the check cutter. Our general manager is still intact. Oh. So is our program director. Uh-oh. Sorry to hear about what's happening around town. Oh. Jeez. I guess you can talk to Vinny about it, too. He's our program director. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's wrong. Is he here today? Yeah. I haven't seen him. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but we do need a new fax uh, machine here. By the way, you can log on to WBLS.com for the details on how you can enter to win in the contest called In Her Shoes. It's the In Her Shoes contest. You know, that's the new movie with um, Cameron Diaz. And um, you'll win a $250 gift card to the container store courtesy of In Her Shoes, the movie, which is now in theaters now. The container store is the store that you go to to put all your shoes to organize your closet. I'm telling you because I had to ask. What does one have to do with the other? You say. Uh, $250 gift card. So go to our website to find out about that contest at WBLS.com. Let's take phone calls, see what people are talking about. I know the people poll question is up on the website. um, And I really um, do care if you guys um, 
please answer the question if you can. Uh, do you care about the Million More March? It's coming up this weekend. Do you guys care? Are you guys aware? Do you care? Do you care? As in, are you? Are, do you care enough to go? Do you care enough to think about it? Do you care enough to read up on it? Is your heart there, but your body just can't be in D.C. this weekend? Do you give a damn oh. about the Million More March? Um, also, I have the results to yesterday's people poll question. Um, do you depend on medication for mental stability? Are you ready for the results? 5% of you all said yes. Ooh, 5 was crazy. <laughs> that means if you put 100 Wendy Williams experienced listeners in a room, 5 need their pills to be right. Wow. That's a little scary. But, you know, it takes all kinds of people to make the world pop. Or pop, pop, pop. Oh. You know, this is the five crazies. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Hi, who's on the phone? Wendy? Yes? Am I the 10th caller? Well, did I just say 10th caller and then went to the telephone at the same... Well, why not? Yes, you are. Oh, my God. That was me. I just made a mistake with that one. Because I shouldn't have I shouldn't have opened the phone lines at the same time. Well, now I have to put you on hold so that somebody can take your information. And good luck with the Dr. Miracles. Do you have um, um, hair that needs to be no lie relaxed? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, you're going to enjoy this product then. Oh, my God. All right, we're going to put you on hold and take your information, okay? Okay. What's thanks. your name? Jahira. All right, Jahira, hold on. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, um, hello? No, we just gave Jahira the package. Hello? Yes, hi. This is Wendy Williams? Yes. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. Yes, I just wanted um, just to say hi to her. Oh, Shout her out. Well, That's it. No, this is me. Hi, it's Wendy. How are you oh, doing? Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi. I love your show. I listen to you every single day. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, that's that's all I was calling for, just to say hi. Well, that's, that's good it. enough for me. Thank okay. you. you know, okay, bye. Bye-bye. Goose, we shouldn't take any more phone calls because um, I made the mistake. Bad host. I gave away a prize while I'm looking for people to comment on the phone. Though. They know they're listening, yeah. though. They can hear it now. Yeah, it's not it's like live. Ordered, they're, they're, mm -hmm. live. they're listening. Mm -hmm. Try it. Try it and see. Listening. You haven't been here long enough to understand. Oh. Right. Hello? Hi, Big Mouth Wendy. Hi. Hi. I'll take it. This is Shay. <laughs> hey, Shay. How you doing? I'm doing well today, Shay. You know what I want to tell you? Oh, good. Yes, Shay. I did see that show um, with Gerald LaVert's daughter. Uh-huh. And she is a big girl. The mother big, too. Oh, oh, wait, really? Yeah, and the mother looks a little older, too, for, uh, uh, you know, for Gerald. That's because she's been dealing with Gerald and his shenanigans all these years. <laughs> I love Gerald LaVert, but mm, the stories are legendary. But you want to know something? That show, that um, that party wasn't any, anything in particular. Yeah. It was just an ordinary party. Yeah. The limo was late. Oh. Uh, she, she was expecting all these people to be out of, uh, on the outside waiting for her, and she was so disappointed. Oh. But she did get the bins at the end of the show, you know. Oh, good. And also, I want to say, give a shout out to Benny Brown because when I was at the Circle Assistant, he allowed my daughter and I to take pictures with Heather Headley, Black, oh. and Charnie. So, Benny, love you. Benny, she loves you. <laughs> yeah, he knows who I am. This is Shay from Harlem, Benny. We love you here, Shay. Shay, everybody, is, is a WBLS super listener. You got that right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Shay. Well, thanks for calling and thanks for listening to our radio station. Okay. Take Love care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, bye, -bye. I'll take somebody else. Sure. Hello. Hi. It's uh, Hi, Wendy. Yeah, yes. Hello. How are you? Fine. Thanks. Wendy, I got a problem. Okay. It's I not advice hour, but I'll take it. No, no, no. It's not that. Uh-oh. I love your show. But? The problem is I live in Florida, Orlando. Oh. So I, I have to listen to you on the internet. But when I get off at five, I can't hear the rest of the show. Can I get you down here in Orlando at all? Yeah. You know what? Um, one of the local radio stations has got to pick up the show. How, okay, tell me how to get it done, and I'll start bothering the radio station. Because, see, WBLS is good with streaming, but they're not going to give you the full product because, we, really, that's a tease out there for people in other markets. Sure, you listen to the show, but now, well, where do you want me to be? You want to be on your local hip-hop and R&B station, or yes. you want to be on your classic oldie station? Because no. I, I can go any which way. No, the hip-hop station here. I'm on a top 40 station in, um, damn, in Flint, Michigan. Wendy, I've been listening to you for over 10 years via the internet. What? 
What? Am I a loyal fan or what? You I are. I stumbled on your website back then, and I've been hooked ever since. Wow. Well, you got to come here. I watch your show on VH1. Wow. The works. And wow. tell Artie, yes, she is fat. Oh, she's fat. Sierra LaVert's daughter. Yeah. Oink, oink. And had the nerve to have a half shirt on and her navel pierced, but that's Shut thing. up. Shut yes, up. She did. Yes, she did. <laughs> Wendy, we just want you here in Orlando. That's all I have to tell you. Wow. Well, you know what? Um, I would love to be there in Orlando, too. I need as many markets as I can possibly get. In the meantime, I appreciate that you listen on the internet and you're so involved with that, all that's going on here at WBLS. <laughs> Well, have a wonderful day. You too, Wendy. And tell everybody in Orlando, I said, how you doing? I will. How you doing? <laughs> and, and everybody, we're going to take a break uh, or continue with the break. We'll be back with some great music and um, then more chit-chat. It's the Wendy Williams Experience till 7 on 107.5 WVLF. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Chris Rock. You know, I want to tell all the celebrities out there, just come on to Wendy Williams. <laughs> She's going to ask you the tough questions. But. Is it so bad, Chris? You just have to, you know, you have to maintain your poise. Yes. And just answer them. And she will move on. You see. But if she senses fear (laughs) or indecision, (laughs) you are all over. Swoop down is what we call that on the show. That's when, yeah, a swoop down is when you get somebody in here under the premise of doing one thing, which is to talk about the movie. But you swoop down. Oh, and well, ask him a question about, you know, something else. Well, I'm a professional actor, too. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, you got to act your way out of yeah, that bag. I, I, I can act my way out of it. <laughs> this is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody. The Wendy Williams Experience is on the radio. Yesterday's paper poll question on the WendyWilliamsExperience.com was, do you depend on medication for mental stability? Well, 5% of you all said yes, and 95% of you all said no. Today's paper poll question, it's always a yes or no question. Do you care about the upcoming Million More March this weekend in Washington, D.C.? Do you care? And we can talk more about the march and what it means to you, uh, if anything, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Oh, the food sensors. Okay. Stephanie, just leave the tape rolling and just, um, yeah, thank you. So about this woman in Arkansas, <clears throat> there's this uh, there's this woman in Arkansas. What is she living in a trailer too? 16 children. Why do we make those kind of stereotypes when we hear so many children? When in actuality, she they could very well be wealthy. And be able to afford it. In which case, have as many children as you want. Michelle Duggar um, just delivered her 16th child. And she's about to... The child was born on Tuesday. The child's name is Jahan. The baby's father's name is Jim. They are married. Um, he's a former state representative. Um... No matter how you cut it, 16 children is just too much. I was just trying to make sense of it. Oh, she's 39 years old. She spent all of her life having kids. All of her life. Would she have her first one when she was 15? And he's 40. And he's probably just a jumping off, just a, you know, just keeping her. Because what, what, what is the best way to keep a woman out of your business? Make too much business where she doesn't have time. There you go. The easiest way to make that business is saddle her with a bunch of kids. All the kids look cute, though. You've seen all the kids? Yeah. You saw the story? Yeah, yeah. Where can I see the kids? Is there a um, website? All, all them damn kids dot com or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can always tell when Art just comes back in the room. I'll say something and he's Check not the a... WB, I think. The WB. Well, he, he, this is what she says. She says we both love children and we're... Cons- uh, um, I was going to say we're considering having more. Uh, yeah, she says are. we both... They are considering they are. having more? Mm-hmm. She says again. each one is a blessing. And he goes on to say, I've asked Michelle if she wants more, and she says yes, if the Lord wants us to have them. Well, apparently, they plan on airing a, a, a show on the Discovery Channel regarding this family and the birth of this 16th child and the whole bit. Would you like to know the age of the children? Yes. All right. Remember, the mother is 39. Just, yeah, just put it down. Um, the oldest is 17. Then they go 15, 15, 14, 12, 11, 9, 8, 6, 6, 5, 4, 2, and 2 days old. 
staircase. Can I tell you what she looks like for 39 years old? Can I tell you what she looks like? She looks like Mrs. Fennelin. Mr. Sariotis' secretary in my kindergarten school, Oakhurst Country Day School. Mrs. Fennelin was at least 75 years old. This woman looks 76. Look. Can you look at everything about her? Nothing looks 39. Nothing. This is 39 yeah, oh, of today. Yes. Yes. Freeze bad man. <laughs> I'm wearing today um, an outfit that Art gave me. Yeah, but I'm disappointed at the way they end up. Oh, with the Uggs on the bottom. Shut the yeah, hell they up. They black Uggs. They just came out of nowhere. You know why? It's been raining for 30 days. Okay? And you I look... wore your black rainbows from yesterday with that outfit. I, I didn't want to. I just wanted to put this on, okay? You just threw the whole outfit off. Art bought me, a, um, or got me. I won't even say bought. <laughs> Art stole, oh! most likely, <laughs> me an outfit. And it's a two-piece. Shout out to everybody at Academic. I love this outfit. It's the one with the rhinestones that say Academic. And then the little Academic logo right here. And when I walked in the office, Alicia and, um, excuse me, Alisa. Oh, she's going to kill me. Why do I do that? And then I feel bad for five hours. Elisa and Nicole both said, wow, nice outfit. And they said, Art gave it to me. Yeah. And they won't be getting one from me, so don't ask. <laughs> I have one so I can match you. Oh, yeah. And we're going to wear them at the Laugh Factory one day, girl. Let's wear them next week. Steve Harvey's going to be there. And we can do a song and dance. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it to that song and dance. Jigaboo oh, oh, music. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, not that. No, not that. Not that, not that, not that. There we go. Yes, yes. In blackface. <laughs> yes, Ambassador. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, there's so much drama going on at my house right now. I'll tell you, I'm trying to um, find laughter through it all. A, no life goes without problems. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll do my reveal next hour. Well, next hour is advice hour, right? Okay, well, next hour, I need you to help me with advice. Oh, well. <sighs> Just like that? Get her a tissue goose. It is a two boxer. Yeah. Sands the um, lotion. I hate the lotion tissues. <laughs> it, you know, if you have to blow your nose that damn much, then what you need to do is borrow one of those things like the babies use and suck every, the, the, the baster and yeah. just suck everything <laughs> out. Uh, do, excuse me, do I have change? Oh, there it is. All right. Th thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, in the meantime, everybody, as we move on, um, the feds have a 50 page memorandum. Opposing um, a motion filed by the Gotti brothers, Irv and Chris Lorenzo Gotti, um, for their upcoming money laundering and racketeering trial. Well, what the Gotti brothers attorney is saying is that, look, the feds search Murder, Inc. unlawfully. They seized stuff unlawfully. Um, also, they tried to discredit an affidavit from the IRS. The particular agent in question at the IRS name is Francis Mace, who claims this Francis Mace is the one claiming that Kenneth Supreme McGriff funded the Inc. and that Supreme and Irv put 50 Cent under surveillance. So, you know, it's still going down. I know we haven't talked about Murder, Inc. and everything. I actually have... It's like a four-page transcript where Puffy, your name is brought up and, and Jay-Z, your name is brought up. People who would be um, good sources for giving McGriff his money for his upcoming. Well, here's what it says. Drug Lord sought Jay-Z and Puffy handouts. Jailed gangster needed money for his criminal defense. Now I got the full transcript. So you all keep it where you got it because Advice Hour is next. Wendy, man. I'm 46 years old. I haven't had any in three years. My wife cut me off three years ago because of her serious mental deficiencies. And I... Yo, did you catch this flashback? Hey, Wendy. Hey, sir. Listen, I'm a foster child. Let me start out by saying that. I'm 32 years old. I've been with my girl for eight months. Uh-huh. I never met her parents. Never met her family. I met them last night. Her mother is my birth mother. Shut up. 
Now, because if this was a fact, exactly. I wouldn't read it. I think you were lying. No, I'm not. Okay, so in other words, you all are half brother and sister. Have you had sex with her? Yes. Ew. Oh, my God. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh. Look, look. Did she go down and give you a professional? Come on, Wendy, yes. Oh, my God. You got beat off by your sister. Yo, did you go down on her? Yes. Oh, You've been with her for eight months. That's eight a months. lot of sex. Yes. Oh, damn. So what is your question to me? I don't know, man. I, I, it's a wrap, you freak. You got it. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting in the studio taking the wrapping off of my new Nate Dog. Excuse me, my new Warren G C day. Oh, All right. Oh, all right. I've made contact with the Warren G camp. Yes. And he'll be in New York in the coming weeks. And he will be a guest on this show. All right now. And when he's here, I don't want to hear any crickets. No, 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 that's not me. I want to just regulate. No, you played crickets when I said that he's got an album coming out. I didn't slip with the button? Yeah, yeah, you you, you didn't slip. You played the crickets over and over again. Oh. And I want you to know that he's put it down. There's 18 songs on this CD, and I plan on putting it in my changer. If I could just break away from that young Jeezy CD for just a moment in my car. Jeezy had a party in New York City last night. The block was hot. Cops checking for people with license plate. Well, you know, that's a perfect place to, to see who's who, who's doing dirt in the city. And, and get them. Either going into the party or coming out to the party. Get them on a double. You know, charge them for, you know, gun possession or something. And, and, and get somebody on some DWI at the same time. So, for a minute there, I was teetering on going to the Jeezy party last night. But it was just too hectic. So, I went home. Oh, Sorry. See, this is my brother's number. Why the hell would he be calling? Uh, excuse me, I'm going to put my phone on silent, and then whatever you have to say, you can call. Hello? Good. Oh. Excuse me, let me just turn this down. <laughs> school must be out of session. Yeah, school's out. They didn't have school today, I think. They didn't? Yom Kippur. Oh, right. Not in Newark. <laughs> Yom Kippur. <laughs> Not in the Newark public school system. All right, so um, shout out to all the aspiring video models. Shout out to all the models, period. Listen, I got a website for you guys to go to. It's called Hood Top Models. Hood Top Models is dot com. Um, that's the website that you go to if you think you've got what it takes and you know you want to check out what all's going on. Go to Hood Top Models yes. and take a look at their website. Hi. You might be able to register to model, and next thing you know, you're in local fashion shows, and before you know it, you're hitting the runway in Milan. Uh oh. You got to start someplace. Starting the hood. I love you sitting around all day listening to this radio show, but really, this show is not going to do anything for your uh, career by way of listening. However, I just gave you a tip hood top models. Now, let me give you another tip there are females and male models who are needed for Shaggy's new video called Broadway. Now, I'm going to give you the date, the address, and the time. If you really want to cheesecake it and get to this um, uh, this this uh, video shoot, then you'll write fast, okay? It's Shaggy's music video for his song called Broadway. And, excuse me, the song's not called Broadway. It's Broadway, I think, is the casting company. Anyway, it's tomorrow, Friday, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. In other words, midnight. 9 p.m. to midnight. It's going to be happening at a place called Fashion. Fashion 40 Lounge. F Fashion 40 Lounge. It's on 202 West 40th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue in New York City. The director is Jason Williams. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, Sam. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Not Jason Williams, who did Gus in. Not that Jason Williams. <laughs> <laughs> From the Nets. This is another Jason Williams. What you doing? Who's that advice yet? Well, my, I advise you to get down there. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. 
You got the address, 202 West 40th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue. The place is called Fashion 40 Lounge. Tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. Between 9 p.m. and midnight. Okay. Okay. I want to talk with you all about something that, that has uh, been going on in my household. And um, it is, it's not strange to many people, but I need your help. My husband... What do you want me to say next? Say, my husband um, discovered late last week that the man that he thought was his father is not his father. What? And he's handling it like a champ. And, you know... My part is to let him handle this with his family or the people that he knows are his family and then, and then you know, other people surrounding. Uh, my part in this is just to, you know, wear my MRS proudly and hold our household down. Um, His last, I don't know who Hunter is. I mean, he knows who Hunter is now. That's that's his last name. Um, but but Mr. Hunter is not my husband Kevin's father. And um, my husband is one of three children. He's got a younger brother. We know who his father is. My husband's in the middle. My husband's got a big sister, Kim. Hey, Kim. Kim and Kevin were always under the impression that their father was Mr. Hunter. It has come out that Kim is Mr. Hunter's daughter and my husband doesn't know who his father is. He's not getting the answers that well, he, you know, how many days has it been? It's been many days. He's not. He has not gotten um, the answers and I mean, so the question is still out there. I guess the reason why, um, well, first of all, he knows that I'm talking to you about it. Because one thing that I can say about this 50,000 watt flamethrower microphone is is it, it gets the job done. Um, he is from Brownsville, Brooklyn. And his father is somewhere out there. So, you know how to get in touch with me. Um, if you all know anything, and I'm, and I'm speaking to, to Brooklyn right now, if you all know anything that can help my husband piece together his family tree, it would be greatly appreciated. And so his name is Kevin. His given name is Hunter. But that's not that's not his 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 father's that's not his father. His biological right. And and Mr. Hunter has already stepped up and said, you know, no, you know, I am I am not and and so on and so forth. And um <sighs> But nobody's talking. Nobody, nobody's, nobody's talking, and so he he wants answers. I want answers for him. Yeah. Do you know who your father is? You can can we make that a people poll question for tomorrow? Do you all, does everybody in this room, raise your hand if you know exactly who your father is. All right, so there's four people. We all know. Uh, you know, as an adult, sometimes I, I guess maybe you think, well, because his life is now a million miles away from Brownsville. He's totally in another place, you know, than Brownsville, Brooklyn, in terms of where, where he lives physically, but also where his mentality is. And, but he's created this beautiful son and... Somewhere there's a grandfather with this great grandson and a crazy daughter-in-law. That would be me. Yes. 
<laughs> you know, who makes a mean lasagna <laughs> and keeps a tidy house for those crazy ways. And um, he just wants to know. Do you do you all know who your fathers are? And does it hurt any does it hurt any less if you're told that somebody is not your father when you're 15, when you're 20, or when you're you know 33? It, Sometimes it affects people deeply. It, well, it's it, it took me by surprise all of this, and it's affected him in a lot of ways, including. Am I predisposed to prostate cancer? You know, like health questions. Health questions. You just want to know. Health questions and and connecting with that man. How would life have been if there was a a father or a father figure? Because there was neither for him. Um, But how would would life be now if, if I grew up with a father? Or at least knowing where my father was, knowing that there was somebody, you know, giving me that extra push and whatnot. Um, and I take it mom isn't around to answer, right? No, Mrs. Hunter's, yeah, she's she's around. And she can't answer? I'm not at liberty to talk about that. Okay. But, um... That's my mother-in-law, you know, Mrs. Hunter. <sighs> but Kim is happy. Kim is connected with her dad. She's happy. She was at the comedy club last night. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> Younger brother Keith, he always knew who his father was. But uh, the middle child... Kevin, my husband, is, uh, you know, and and it's not, and and it still affects, even though, you know, you've created your own family and and whatnot, it it still affects. I've never dealt with a situation like this, and, um, you know, I've turned into Brie Vanderkamp when, when, when work is over. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I've always, you know, kept a clean house and been about my business and and order and family and and all like that, but I feel as though, uh, you know, I'm clinging even tighter to, you know, like, no matter what, it's going to be okay. You know, you got me, we got our son, you know, it's the three of us. Whoa, family. But there's more to it than that, as I'm finding out, because I've never been in this situation before. There's more to it. People want to know where they come from, because where you come from is part of where you're going. At the very least, how you're going to die you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're if you're predisposed to certain things, and he wants to connect, he wants to. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. And sometimes, you know, you think, you know, because you know how somebody's position disposition is, or how somebody acts, or whatever, that you know maybe they're too hard and even care about connecting because you know it's about the paper and you know the grunt. No. It's about family. It's about family. So, you know, if you know anything, is my email set up, Art? Or are you still trying to set it up? Oh, no, no, no. She's going to get back to me. Okay, but I need an email now. Yeah. So More than like, because I told her it's going to be Wendy at the Wendy Williams. Yeah, okay, but I, that's not now. Right now, I need to, because there, there could be somebody in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn, or somebody in Brooklyn that knows something. So I am here for another few hours, and I'm here every day at the same time. And my fax number is um, 866-WENDY-FAX. You know my telephone number is 866-GET-WENDY. And I'll give you my assistant, Nicole. You can do Nicole at WBLS.com. I have a girl, right, for 10 years. Like half of it, I've been in jail like five years. I come home recently, right? Mm-hmm. And I come to find out now she's dealing with women. I don't have no problem with that, you know what I mean? As long as you can be in on it. Yeah, yeah. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS with the return of the $107,000 cash guarantee. Back by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand. $1,000 winners throughout the day. Set your rate.
radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at 7.15 a.m. Then listen for Steve again at 12.15 and then again at 5.15. Be the 10th caller and you're an instant winner. That is crazy. It's a $107,000 cash guarantee. On 107.5 WBLS, today's R&B and classic soul. Hey, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience here at WBLS. And um, tomorrow is Friday. Don't miss the Black Church Means Business 2005 Youth and Business Junior Conference. It's happening at the New Life Tabernacle UPC, which is at 4905 Avenue D in Brooklyn. Everybody's welcomed. I'll give you the telephone number if you want more information. 718. This is a big youth conference. Big Black Church Means Business 2005 Youth and Business Junior Conference. 718-209-9111. So what are you all talking about today? Uh, let's go to the phone. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi. Yeah, I wanted to um, comment on your situation. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Well, not really the same thing happened to me. My mom had already always told me that um, my stepfather wasn't my real father. Mm-hmm. But you still have that longing to know what they look like. Yeah. You know, what they're doing, what kind of person they are. Right. And I've, I finally came in contact with my real father at age 26. Yeah. Wow. Turns out, though, he was in prison. Mm. And the Do funny you- thing is that my stepfather knew how to find him. And he was like, do you really want to know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've been waiting all this time. Do you know? And he was like, I don't want to really tell you this, but he's incarcerated. What, what did he do? <clears throat> well, um, you know me, being the detective I am. Well, mostly, I was, do you want to know whether you have the murder gene? And uh, it's funny you should say that because... Y- you've got the murder I, gene. I went online, uh-huh. looked up the um, inmate lookup, and typed in information. All I had, all I had was a name and a date of birth. And um, looked it up, and the name matched. So I sat down, wrote a letter, and basically told him, you know. Why was he in prison? Why is he in prison? Is what I asked, though. Um, murder. It's not necessarily murder, but yeah, someone I think did die. And so um, we keep in contact, mm-hmm. but um, I haven't heard from him in a while. Mm-hmm. And he really wants to get to know me. Wants to know his grandkids. But at the same time, I need him to explain. Why does he have that charge? Yeah. How long ago did you initially make contact with him? Um, <clears throat> uh, four years ago. Well, geez, it's been four years. And I haven't gone to see him yet, and I keep, and I he, want to. And he hasn't explained to you? Um, well, he said that he, he will. Yeah. And he's like, obviously, if you found me, you know why I'm here, because you've been doing your research. Mm-hmm. But I haven't got the full story of exactly what happened. Yeah. All right. Thank you for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Wendy, hi. Hi. My mom was in the exact same situation. Mm. Her, the person that she grew up with, thinking that was her dad, wasn't yeah. her dad. He wasn't her dad. He didn't grow up with Hunter either. Excuse me. He didn't grow up with Mr. Hunter. Yeah, but he didn't. My 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 mom didn't even grow up with her with her father. Right. And he he used to come and visit the house um, because she thought he was another sibling's father. Oh but wow. But wasn't until his deathbed she found out that that was actually her dad. Wow. But the thing, I mean, I I commend you for supporting your husband, but you never know. Like, sometimes you have to let sleeping dogs lay. That's what my mom said. Because my friend, I have another friend, like, it happens a lot in West Indian communities Mm -hmm. where, like, people who, they think this is their dad and it's not their dad. My my friend just found out that his mom is not his mom. The person he used to call his aunt was his mom. Yeah, but, you know, but the thing is, is that how, how much worse could it get than yeah, it, it can't be but that's what they think in their mind they think it can be so bad well i don't i don't let go, the truth be out i don't go along with the sleeping dog's lie thing and i'm glad that my husband is is in pursuit i mean i would have i would have supported him no matter what it is that he wanted to do yeah right down to um you know him not being you know the son of a mr hunter change our last name Exactly. And, and believe me, I've been judging over a few names in my mind. Artie, how does Wendy Carrington sound? Yes, wow. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. wow. That sounds great. I mean, you know, but- if you could pick a name out of a hat, why not? <laughs> you should really, I mean, I, I commend you. Support your husband. I hope yeah. you guys find out. Yeah. All the best to you and everything. Well, thank you very much. Okay, have uh, a good afternoon, Wendy. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hi, Wendy. Hi. I'm, um, I'm just listening, and I have a friend whose father... 
was his mother told him that his father was one guy and then told him that his father was another guy and then the guy that he found out was his father died. So, you know. So did your, was your friend, um, you know, unemotional about the whole thing or, or did she <clears throat> wish that she pursued it a long time ago just to get to know, just to even, I really even don't look think at... He cared. I really don't think his mother cared. No, not his mother. I'm talking about um, the person who didn't know who his father was. See, because to me, I would just want to, like, glimpse at the person's eyes. Like, do, who do I look like? You know, well, I, got my, I got my nose from, I got my mouth from. I... I totally understand. And, you know, that's just one thing, you know, I was thinking that your husband might have to think about or deal with that maybe his father may not even be around anymore. And he would have to just prepare himself for that tragedy well that let down. well that i i think he's prepared for that you know he <clears throat> i mean a lot of this has been internalized with him as opposed to me badgering him for conversation you know it's like awkward for me because i'm a talker uh mm -hmm. at home and so is he but you know i also know when to you know back the hell off and i am totally letting him guide our family me through this um i talk about it if he wants to talk about it I, right. I mostly listen. Unless I get a question with a question mark at the end, I mm -hmm. don't offer my um, opinion or comment. All I offer is a strong shoulder to lean on and a hot plate and a clean house and the assurance that, you know, we are in it for the long haul. We're going to ride this map. You got family here. And that, right. and that you can be sure of. And that's all you can do. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. Well, I love your show, Wendy. Thanks. Well, thank you. I love you for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, We'll take more phone calls. Hello. Hi. You're on the radio. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. This is Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hello. Turn your radio down. You're getting confused. Sorry about that. I just turned it's, you off. It's okay. I apologize. It's okay. I was just calling. Uh, first of all, hello. Hi. It's my first time calling in, but I listen to you often. You. I had a similar situation as well. When I was 16, I have an aunt. You know, everybody has an aunt that drinks a little too much and then tells family business. Yes. After my 16th birthday, she was getting a little tipsy. She's like, do you know who your dad is? Oh, no. I was like, yeah, I do. And she's like, okay, what's his name? And I was like, his name is so-and-so. She's like, mm, your mother told you that? Mm. I was like, well, she's never said anything different. She was like, I think you should, I suggest you ask your mother who your father is. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I pondered over it for a few days or so, and then I finally asked her. I was like, you know, I... I I played it off like I had this dream and this man's name came into my head and could you possibly tell me who this person is? Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough that I grew up with a father, a stepfather, mm -hmm. who's been there since I was two. Yeah. I thought that my dad was the person she had married and had divorced when I was two. Okay. Come to find out, he wasn't even my father, so I had this big resentment against him for not staying in my life what about your mother? for all of those years. And I actually never even had the opportunity to meet the person who I am. Mm. Fortunately, my mother's genes are the stronger ones, so we look exactly alike. Mm. There is no situation where I look in the mirror and go, hmm, I wonder where this came from or I wonder where that came from. Yeah. But I, I always had that feeling of wanting to know who this person was mm -hmm. just so that I can ask him, why would you choose to leave right. since you knew who I was? Right. Well. Yeah. And, I mean, as far as your husband is concerned, I really feel for him with the situation and everything. And if he is fortunate to meet the person, I wish him all the luck. I do. Mm. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you. It's, uh, it's always comforting, um, you know, when people go through similar situations or same situations. And I always say, like, during advice hour, no matter how crazy and toe-ish somebody's story might be there is somebody out there who can absolutely relate to the situation so to me there is no such thing as oh my gosh nobody wants to hear that during advice hour because everybody can relate to some portion of somebody else's story up until last thursday i didn't realize just how much in this particular category um, do we have time to take more phone calls? Yeah, take more. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I'm listening online. Thank you. Um, my name is Kimberly, and I have a situation like that, too, where I didn't grow up knowing my father, mm. and I was always made to think that this other man was my father, mm. and he had passed away when I was in my early teens. Mm. And when he did, I still wasn't told who my real father was. Mm -hmm. 
and I didn't find out until I was in my mid thirties. Yeah. And um, the thing is, I got to know the family, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of them. It's like <laughs> eight or nine or ten of them mm -hmm. on my father's side. Mm -hmm. But by the time I got to know my father, he had had Alzheimer's. Oh. And, um, you know, so his brain was deteriorating. Mm -hmm. But he knew who I was. Mm -hmm. And I got to know the sisters. It's like eight or nine of them. Mm -hmm. And um, Did you embrace your new step-siblings? I did. I or did. siblings? I did. Siblings? And the thing is, it becomes complicated because once you embrace them and you get sort of in the family, mm -hmm. there seems to be, like, some of them accept you and some don't because... You know, I'm the product of an affair that my father had, my mother had with him. Mm. And um, so mm. some embrace you, some kind of don't. And the thing is, it's like there's a line where if you become involved with a family and family issues, mm. it's always this line where, you know, you feel like you can't cross because it's like... You're well, still a stranger. You just Yeah, answer. what do you know? You didn't grow up with us. So yeah. how can you say anything about our situation? Mm. So after my father passed away, um, he passed away about two, three years ago. Did you lose contact with the family? Yeah. yeah. I kind of wanted to distance myself yeah. because being a part of such a huge family, and I'm a mother's only living child. Yes. It just became very stressful for me. I understand. And um, well, so, yeah. Yeah. I got to get off the phone, but thank you for your okay. story. You're welcome. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I guess my husband will take it one step at a time when he finds this person, when he finds this person's identity, living or dead, you know, he's not going to stop until he finds. And as far as embracing, you know, um, his, you know, his father, his biological father's family and all like that, you know, that, whoa, we're going too far up the road. You know, we take it one step at a time and and i'm just there for support you know i can cook for 150 if i need to <laughs> all right everybody uh the advice hour continues we got some do we have time to play some good music no. good i don't like the music anyway i just try to play it off <laughs> I don't like the music any place, not just here, just period. Radio's for talk. <laughs> it's WBLS. Yo, what's up? It's Kells, your music weather man, and I want all of the sexy ladies and the dressed up fellas to join me for the official Best of Both Worlds after party. Happy people, baby. <laughs> what was that? Woo! Hey, now. Tears of a Clown. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you're here on the show. So it's advice hour. I want to go to the phone and help you out with um, your situations. Um, and if you can help me out with mine um, or you want to share similar stories, um, I'll take that as well. Um, it's 866-GET-WENDY. Hello. Hi, you're on the radio. Wow, is this Wendy? Yes, this is me. Oh, my God. I finally got through. How are you? Anyway, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I know you can't talk long, but I have a similar situation. And... And I just want to say, you know, I notice a lot of women are calling in, but this is a black boy thing. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing who your father is. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, for years, I was raised to believe a certain man was my father. He got his name, everything. Yeah. And then when I, came, when I turned 21, I got to slow down. <laughs> when I turned 21, my mother told me, so-and-so is your father. Mm. And I used to see this man when I was young. He used yeah. to come around. Mm -hmm. And I always thought he was a family friend. I never mm -hmm. knew he was my father. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in some cases, it's important to know because <laughs> sometimes you find out you're a totally different nationality. Why? Cases. Are you a totally different nationality? Well, I found out that part of my family is Dominican. Oh. So, you know, you grow up thinking you're, you're you know, African-American. And then you find out. Yeah. <laughs> so... I think with Kevin, your husband, you know, it's a process. It's yeah. really a process. And I think like what you're saying, support him. But it really is a process because there's a process of anger. I went through for years with my mother not knowing her keeping it from me. Yeah. A lot of anger, mm -hmm. a lot of resentment. Mm -hmm. And now I have a relationship with my father. See, that's... How is that relationship? That's what I would like to know. The, the relationship is, is, is... It's weird. It's great. But then it's very on, off, on, off. Now, and finally, I look like somebody. Finally, I relate to somebody. Finally, why wasn't, I'm why, connected. Why wasn't your father, um, ever, why wasn't anybody ever told that he was your father? 
Why weren't so, you ever told? Again, this happened kind of in an affair. My mother was involved with my sister's father. I'm the oldest. My mother was involved with my sister's father. And then he went away, I, I guess, to Vietnam or something. And mm -hmm. my mother met my father. It was mm -hmm. an affair. My sister's father came back. He said he would raise me as his son. Wow. They had more kids. And I always believed he was my father. Mm -hmm. Then later on in life, as I started to develop personal problems, well, I kind of figured, you know, well, maybe I guess it's time to tell him. Yeah. And just told me. So what's your, and, what are your feelings about the man who um, raised you as, as a son? Well, see, that's the thing. My sister's father, my mother, wound up divorcing him. Yeah. And he had a lot of mental problems. He was in and out of mental hospitals. So I'm thinking. So at least you don't have the now, crazy I'm gene. Have, <laughs> no, you, you don't have, have these problems. When I do that, yeah. I'm going to go bald. You know, yeah. those types of things. Yeah. And you find out you, you're not connected to this person other than. Now, what are your feelings towards your mother? Well, it's been a process. Like I said, um, I. I love my mother dearly, mm -hmm. and the anger has finally subsided. Mm -hmm. But for like four years, there was a lot of anger. I thought she didn't care about me. Yeah. I said, how could you do this to me? Uh, you know, but that's the process that Kevin has to work through, and yeah. that's going to take time. Well, thank you so much for calling. Thank you for answering. Finally. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, you're on the radio. It's Advice Hour. Hello. Hi. How you doing, Wendy? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm Okay. I just wanted to say what's up. Well, th thank you for calling. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, it's Wendy, and you're on the radio. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. How are you? Hello. Hi. Yeah, Hello. It would help if you turn your radio down. Sorry, sorry. Okay, focus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm involved with somebody that I've been with for a little bit. It's mm -hmm. not long. Mm -hmm. And I found out a while ago that he gave me something. What? Herpes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> One out of four people has herpes. Go ahead. Okay. What happened is right now I feel that I don't want to be with anybody else but him because of that. I understand. What should I do? You should not relegate yourself to being with somebody just because of herpes. I mean, you know, we make jokes and we press the dramatic button, but the fact of the matter is is that there are herpes support groups. There are um, ways of dealing with herpes. You know, you don't have sex during outbreaks and whatnot. I think what you really do need to do is you need to go and sit down with your GYN and map out a plan in terms of um, medication and and trying to hone in on on when your outbreaks are. Then you might want to go online and um, get in a chat room, a, a little herpes support group chat room. Uh, but I would not... I'm dealing with uh, this actually with an acquaintance of mine right now who told me the same thing the other day. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. That is the lamest excuse for staying with somebody I have ever heard in my life. You care nothing about him. Why would you stay? So, but uh, being in the African-American society, they're looked down upon within that. Oh, please. Black people have herpes one out of four, too. Don't be fooled. I, I understand. <clears throat> so I know that. Being in the health field, but... You, you know, when you when you say it'll never happen to me, yeah. you kind of just, like, push that away. I know. You know? I understand. And you can't, being, like, a, a, a um, looked-upon person in society, you can't say, well, okay, well, I'm going to expose this to a, a person that I'm well, well known. Well, you have to choose the right time in whatever your new relationship is, and I don't know what that right time is, but I can tell you if you go maybe get some therapy to help you out, you know, somebody to actually talk to. And plus, mm -hmm. you get in one of these support groups, you know, people who have herpes in support groups, and <clears throat> you talk to your GYN. But having herpes is no reason to just stay in a relationship with this man because he gave you the herpes. Okay? Yes. I wish you well. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. I was just dealing with that exact, that exact same thing the other day with an acquaintance. The exact same thing. I think I gave her the exact same answer, too. <laughs> oh, boy. It is what it is. Let's get back to gossiping and stuff. I mean, you know, I'll take your phone calls about whatever. I haven't gotten any um, faxes regarding who my husband's biological father is. I guess more to a little bit more to the story is, is that um, 
he did not grow up in the house with the man that he thought was his father. The man that he thought was his father was, you know, just, you know, Mr. Hunter, just, you know, some guy, yada, yada, yada. So, no, he didn't grow up with any father figure in the house. None at all. So, um, and perhaps his life would have been different, you know, if he at the very least had, um, or it will be different if he had the answer to who his biological is. So, anyway, it's the Wendy Williams experience where the drama continues every day. Wendy, man. My ex-boyfriend, he wants to fight me. How old is everybody? I'm 43. Oh. She's 38. Oh. And- <laughs> Don't make me mad. <sighs> oh, it's like, whoa, I got all these crazy people calling in the office now talking about, I think we're related. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, whoa, whoa. And somewhere out there could be his daddy's people calling up. But how am I supposed to weed out the crazies from the real deal? Oh, damn. What a family tree. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Queen of Brownsville. (laughs) 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 Woo, if you're just turning on the radio, welcome, honey. Hey, NBC is scouring the country looking for promising comedians of color, Arthur. Oh. Should I say this out loud? Because maybe somebody else will jump on it and maybe you want this, not them. Give give it to me. No, yeah, I'll I'll share. Competition is good. Are you sure? I'm positive. You're just getting into the business. There are people that are better than you, Capone. Yes, but he's been in for 25 years. Well, don't you think that he'd be the one to get this? Well, then if he does, he deserves it. Oh, oh, you're so fair. I'm a new boy. I'm learning from him. All right. Well, then aspiring comedians. Not aspiring. Just comedians. Per- per- comedians, listen up. Yes, this yes. just in. Uh-oh. NBC is scouring the nation for the most promising comedians of color in a nationwide Stand Up for Diversity audition. Out of 400 or so comedians who showed up. Oh. Uh-oh. This already happened, Arthur. Oh. Sorry, Capone. <laughs> Wait, two were chosen. One created the most excitement. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so, so this is a has-been thing. Damn, I thought I was going to give something about an audition. NBC Talent Hunt began in May in Chicago and traveled through Austin, Texas, San Francisco, Boston. The idea began... Um, oh, here it is. They wanted to steer clear of New York and Los Angeles. They want to find the fresh and the green. Oh, the country, yeah. The yes, the regional favorites. Oh. oh, well, that's why we knew nothing about it. Well, I know that um, Cynthia Brent, who was the bookkeeper over at Murder Inc., now you remember she was indicted for. Um, and charged with uh, money laundering over a million dollars in money. And the way she'd structure it to avoid the federal reporting is that she would um, make sure that um, there were transactions at the bank, $10,000 a pop. You know, they don't have to report it if it's, you know, 10000 and under. So um, they, meaning the bank, doesn't have to report it to the government. So that's one of the things that she was doing. Uh, the rest of the story seems to have gotten cut off. I did have the transcript. Art, as a matter of fact, you squealed with delight. This just in. Oh, gosh. This just in. Go. Wendy Williams' email account has been set up. Okay, good. It is called Wendy at the Wendy Williams Experience.com. Thank God. No E dots forward slash Yahoo. What? Yay, yay, yay. Okay. It's Wendy at the Wendy Williams Experience.com. It's you at you. It's me at me. I know who I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wendy at the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. So um, if by chance um, you'd like to email about anything from this point on, it's not going to be private. So because I need somebody to go fetch my emails for me, not fetch art. I don't mean fetch like a dog, but I mean, you know, <laughs> no, I just mean the- you have the you have the password to get in, right? Yeah, they gave it to me in this email, yeah. Okay. I'm going to give it to you, too, though. Are you going to show me how to get my own emails? And you can show Junior. And I can show my son. That's right. He can get my emails every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. So, what else is going on, you ask? Oh, well, things are still continuing with the Eddie Murphy divorce. 
It's alleged that he's liquidated a $50,000 property. And, oh, excuse me, $50 million property. $50 million in property. And people are speculating um, whether or not he will look to sell the house that he and his former in-laws live in. You know, he bought a house for Nicole's parents. Well, wouldn't they be the first to go? I mean, out of the anger for your the wife, you can't really, you know, get at the wife because the wife is taking care of your kids while you're out with Johnny Gill oh. and them. You know what I mean? So wouldn't the in-laws be the first to go? As, as beautiful and nice as they might be, somebody's going to suffer the wrath, doggone it. Somebody has got to suffer the wrath. Well... Oh, oh, this just in. Uh-oh. Damn. <laughs> Get ready, Mark. Get ready, Mark. Uh-oh. Author Terry McMillan has been ordered to pay her ex-husband, <gasps> Jonathan Plummer, a $50,000 divorce settlement. Frightful, Wendy. Fri- frightful, Wendy. Oh, my gosh. You were looking to eat off this money until forever. $50,000. Man, that's crazy. That's... It's nothing. Nothing. Oh, we need to get Jonathan on the telephone. That's right. This is October. And I believe yesterday is the day that they went to court. Oh, my God. Well... On one hand, that's great. Women don't have to pay no past spousal support after 11 years of marriage. Yeah, but they also didn't have any children together. You could be married to a man under the belief that he's heterosexual and he can turn your world inside out and all around. She had a better lawyer. Because she could afford one. No, but not only that, but... but um. He said he didn't know. Men can lie and get away with that and say they don't know, but he didn't get away with anything. Because he got nothing. $50,000 is nothing in the bigger scheme of things. No. After taxes, what? I'd give it to him in pennies to make it difficult to pick up. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'd I'd give it to him in pennies and nickels. Hmm. Well, so she won. Good for Terry. As the woman, you're always secretly rooting for the woman. But I was, you know, I, I, I like Jonathan's story. I, I stick by what I said. I couldn't understand how she couldn't tell he wasn't gay to begin with. Or he was gay to begin with. And how he thought he was getting away with that lie. He just got up on a needy, cobweb woman yes. who really just needed it. And needed a hug. And needed to be spooned. And didn't want back talk. And he was docile. And gay. And... That's it. Yeah. Well, so then the marriage is officially over. Jonathan Plummer got $50,000. And only one line to talk about it. Jonathan, it's not even a big deal. And it's a sidebar to the Terry... Listen, divorce news. Eddie Murphy's allegedly liquidating a $50 million property. People are speculating whether he'll sell the house that his former in-laws, Nicole's parents, live in. Author Terry McMillan was ordered to pay her ex-husband, Jonathan Plummer, $50,000 for a divorce settlement. That's one story. I mean, one one, uh, sentence. Well... He shouldn't have gone public with it. He shouldn't have gone public? Yeah, that's why. And he looked at all that. Excuse me, Art? We benefited from that public. Yeah, we did. But he only got 50 grand from it. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sucker. I'm gay. I'm a homo. I like guys. Damn. <laughs> Put that where? <laughs> 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 How you doing? <laughs> Halloween came very early this year. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Organizers of the Vibe Awards are considering scrapping the second annual celebration of the Vibe Awards. Uh, thanks to the beatdowns and all what has ensued last year. Thanks a lot, Young Buck. 
Well, Kenneth Gibbs is the publisher of the Vibe magazine. And um, he's a big supporter of the music industry and, of course, the award shows and whatnot. Um, but the editor-in-chief's name is Mimi Valdez, and she's determined to put the past behind her and move um, the world in understanding that um, urban music does not go hand-in-hand hand with violence. And here's what she says. Regardless of what happened last year, it's our mission to do this, meaning the awards show. There still aren't a lot of outlets on network television to expose urban music <laughs> artists, especially new talent. We want to celebrate the spectrum of artists and the culture that the music has to offer. Yeah, don't forget the security. This time, not just at the doors, but backstage, too. I think they should have it. Why would that even be up? What venue are they going to use? See, because now you've scared the white people. Oh. oh, my gosh. Loud. Loud. Oh, by the way, Dame Dash cleaned out his office, including the doorknobs and the blinds. Did you see that in yesterday's paper? He's a catty bitch. Yeah. He's a very catty bitch. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very gay move, uh, Dame. <laughs> but you know what he says? He says, I picked out everything in this office. I picked out from the from the flooring to the desk to the blinds, the doorknobs, the whole bit. So on one hand, why not? On the other hand, it just, yeah, you know. Petty. Yeah, very petty. They said he stripped the office bare, even the doorknobs. And by the way, now that the Reverend Run show is coming on, I don't need my fix of ghetto reality on Wednesday nights anymore. So I, I or Tuesday nights, so I feel no obligation to go to the hustle hustle flow show, which the first the first night it held me. I was telling you guys yesterday after watching it on Tuesday night. Did it hold you on Tuesday night? No. It held you Monday night though, because we were both on the telephone screaming, yeah. squealing. Yeah. But tonight is the Reverend Run show. On MTV. That looks good. And I'm going to watch that. I haven't seen any of the previews or nothing, but I know that he's selling the house that um, that they filmed it in. He did announced today he's selling it for $5.2 million in Saddle River. Well, now he's exposed the house. Yeah. On the show runs house to everybody. But I heard his wife is funny. The kids have big personalities. So this sounds like <clears throat> exactly what we need to portray. Um, the Simmons. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we we enjoyed Bobby and Whitney, but that was that's tragic enjoyment. So I'm thinking that this Reverend Run show <clears throat> will be the other spectrum of that, and hopefully not so syrupy sweet that it's like the Cosby's, because while that there is some realness in that, we all know what was really going on backstage at the Cosby show. <laughs> Cockroach cursing people out. Bill Cosby with his flown in. <laughs> you know? Oh, boy. His wife is cute, too. Is she cute? Yeah, she's nice looking. And run, and run, and Russell and Kimura is going to be in it. So it's going to be real fabulous. In family. Yeah. Fabulous in family. Yeah. I'm looking forward to watching that. I'm going to watch that tonight on on MTV. I guess after I return all these crazy people's phone calls. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of crazy people on the line in the office. But, Shout you know. Shout out to DMC. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I wonder if he's going to be in the show. Louder. Run wants all the light for himself. Yes. Yeah. It's windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Why can't you say? That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is why can't the f you say? The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS with the return of the $107,000 cash guarantee. Backed by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand. $1,000 winners throughout the day. Set your radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at 7.15 a.m. Then listen for Steve again at 12.15 and then again at 5.15. 
Be the tenth caller and you're an instant winner. That is crazy. It's a one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee on one hundred seven point five WBLS. Today's R and B and classic soul. <sighs> oh my gosh. Um. Oh, I'll get back to you. Are people still calling? They're calling. They're emailing. Everyone is either sharing their stories or saying that they have an answer. They have the they have the relative that they think we match. Is my father. husband's father? Yes. People just want free tickets to um, you know, <laughs> Mary J. Blige concert. <laughs> See, because uh, come on, you all, please don't play with um. Yeah, with, this is very serious. This is this is serious. So don't flood me with emails on you think your your, your next door neighbor could be Kevin's father. I mean, oh my gosh, what here. would make them think that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? All right, are they including their telephone numbers? And yes, whatnot? they are. They're actually including everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna give all this stuff to him. Okay. I'm just the wife. Right. Yeah, he can sort through it. Who was asked to you know see because he's determined to get to the bottom right. of this. My name's Bennett, and I'm not in it. <laughs> you don't want to know my opinion, so I'll just shut up. But um, I'll take all that stuff home tonight. Okay, all right. great. Thanks. Okay. Shout out to Yvonne Graham. She lives in Browns, or excuse me, she lives in Brooklyn, but she used to live in Brownsville. She faxed me with a plethora of questions. Hey, Wendy, did Mr. Hunter raise Kevin? As if he were the biological father. No, Mr. Hunter was not in the house. No, he did not raise him. No, Kevin was led to believe Mr. Hunter was, you know, some, you know, bleh, is, you know. Was there any reason for Kevin to ever think Mr. Hunter was not his father growing up? Um, well, Kevin didn't know him like that. And yeah, they were in and out of thinking a lot of it based on why do I look like this and everybody else looks like this. You know what I mean? How did Kevin find out? And what is Kevin's mom telling Kevin about all this? Hmm. I don't want to talk about that. Does Kevin want to know who his biological father is? Yes, Yvonne, that is the purpose. <laughs> that is the purpose of me, uh, you know, reaching out. Whose name is on Kevin's birth certificate? I don't know. Come to think of it, it might be a blank. I don't know. The only one who has these answers is Kevin's mom. So, oh, some way he has to get her to answer all the questions truthfully. It's for Yvonne in Brownsville. Brownsville. I mean, Vaughn, if we had the answers, I wouldn't be on the radio putting our business out in the damn street. But you want to know it, though? Also, because you'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, how many people have faxed, called on the air and behind the scenes, emailed and whatnot their own stories. There are a lot of people out there who, who have been deceived regarding their father or who have just never known who their father was. Wow. And whose moms have never given them critical information or whose family has died before critical information was found out. There are a lot of people out there like this. I knew you all wouldn't be shocked. Because, you know, with this Toeish show that we do here, there's really not that much that can take us too far out of, you know, too far out of here in terms of being shocked. But um, I would like to know, and only because he would like to know, because in his own way, you know, I mean, he's still doing his day to day, you know, activities and, you know, but in his own way, he's hurting about this. And so, you know, his name is Kevin Hunter. Hunter's not his... Um, biological father's last name he knows this already um but what he wants to know is who's his biological father my husband he wants to know well it's been 30 something years he's never known wow yeah wow well, wow wow well world do you know who your father is <laughs> you know <that. laughs> why would you do that to world shout out to world i mean you know it happens it happens and it, you know all i can do is uh cook the meals and, and 
by the tide and make sure that the house, you know, stays clean and, and, and you know, be the good woman that I am. And assure him that, you know, th- little Kevin's your son. <laughs> Don't start and I won't be none. <laughs> it is your son. <laughs> I don't have any other kids out there. Do you? <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm staying in my lane. Anyway, um, this hour of the Wendy Williams Show is brought to you by Cafe Bahia. Oh, yeah. Nothing like shaking your behind on a Saturday night. That's where the party is in Stanford. Saturday night, Cafe Bahia. It's a BLS live broadcast. I want to talk to you about L.A. weight loss. You know the only other thing, in my opinion, better than L.A. weight loss if you want to lose weight? Stress. Because when you have stress, your stomach is in knots. In, can you eat when there's stress? Man, listen. Oh. You, you can't eat? No, I hit the wrong button. Oh. You're a little rusty on the buttons, Hollywood. You haven't been in here it's in a long time. I haven't been in here in like yeah. two months. You're in that dark, dank, temporary studio that they've made for you. <laughs> Where nothing works. <laughs> but I'm used to that. That's okay, because we're remodeling the inside of this whole place. <laughs> yeah, I this believe is... it when I see it. You see the, You see everything going down. That might be like that for the next two years. <laughs> 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 the paint is on the wall in my new office. That might be like that for the next two years, too. That might be like that for the next two years, too. <laughs> well, let me talk to you about L.A. weight loss. Uh, be- best thing next to a bowl full of stress in terms of losing weight. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. The people at L.A. weight loss are very, very helpful. They completely understand. They've been in the weight loss business for over 10 years and still going strong, still successful. Millions of people have lost millions of pounds on L.A. weight loss. I myself lost 17 pounds. And apparently this holiday season, with all the stress swirling around, I will not be gaining any any holiday weight. Christmas won't be the same this year. <laughs> These are tears of a clown. You realize that, right? Yep. I mean, you can read right through this, right? Yeah. It, everybody handles things differently, and you know how I handle mine. A song and a dance and a joke. And I get in my car and I cry. <laughs> anyway, uh, call LA Weight Loss and um, do the right thing in terms of your weight loss. You know, the pill popping, the coke sniffing, the stress, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is Hollywood's doing, don't follow that. Do it the healthy way. 1 800 448 T. R-I-M, 1-800-448-TRIM. It's L.A. Weight Loss. Did I mention to you that they're affordable? Okay, they're affordable. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there are over 600 L.A. Weight Loss locations around the country. So you know there's one near your house, your father-in-law's house. Oh, I don't have one of those yet. I would love to have a father-in-law. Yeah? Yeah. A good one. Yeah, be another grandfather for my son. The, providing, you know, we get the answers that we need, and I'm leaving this up to my husband. If we get a thumbs up, man, little Kev, that, you know, it's cool, we can go in, I'm open. Wait, so who do you think it was all this time? <coughs> Mr. Hunter. Oh, excuse me. A man that, d- he didn't grow up in the house with Mr. Hunter. But his last name is Hunter. But he's not really a hunter. So now that they're now they're they're for a moment there was this thing about we got to change our last name. How do you think Wendy Carrington sounds? Wendy Carrington. Kevin Carrington. Wendy Carrington. The Carringtons. Kevin Carrington is cool. Wendy Carrington. Because you got the W W, the K K C. But I'm Wendy Hunter. Well, I was until a few days ago. Yeah, but the same, the the same sound got a, a better ring to it. Wendy, Wendy Hunter. Wendy, Wendy Williams it just rings. Yeah. yeah, that's my maiden name. I'm married. I know, but still. Wendy. Wendy Carrington. Shut up. You don't know. Goose. Wendy Carrington. Yeah, it's not bad, man. Anyway, the point is, is that, you know, if, if you know, well, we need the answers and that, or he needs the answers. And once he gets the answers, I'm down. I'm supporting my husband. What, one way or the, exactly. That's how it is. Call me for my dinner reservation. What? Do it. Say it. Mrs. Carrington. My, your table was right here. Oh, it, boy. Thank you. It's got sophistication. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. 
What do they say? Fake it till you make it. Yeah. One day I'll be that sophisticated. <laughs> I drink white wine. I used to not do that a year ago. Anyway, who wants to win some hair relaxer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your BDB's acting up. Okay. Well, call the number 10 on the phones at 866-GET-WENDY. It's going to win a $100 gift pack from Dr. Miracle's brand new <laughs> thermocutical intensive, no lie, relaxer system, leaving your hair soft, shiny, and ready to be styled. So call now and you'll win some hair out. You know, you don't win stuff like this on Z100. This is why I love <laughs> black radio, boy. Who wants to win some hair relaxer? <laughs> Call the Splaboo Girl Show. <laughs> Where Daddy is still trying to be located. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is what it is, people. It's 107.5 WBLS. Are you yes. Did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Suge Knight. So how do you feel about people... Uh, Still looking at you as the cause of Biggie's death, Tupac's death. For somebody to say I had anything to do with both of those deaths is actually really crazy. But there's got to be a lot of jealousy though, because you know I'm my own man. I do my own thing. I don't, I don't bother nobody, but I don't run from those. Right. And the thing is, for his Pac, everybody knew how I felt about Pac. Everybody knew how Pac felt about me. We got him. This is it right here. <laughs> Miss a day. Miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's Wendy, man. <laughs> what about Wendy Wellington? Wendy Wellington, Kevin Wellington, the Wellingtons. That's not Richard Snow. As royal as the Carringtons, while keeping with the woo woo. All right, let's open up the door. We've got um, authors in today, everybody. It's um, Kieran Bates Morrow and Tracy Rochelle High. Now, who's who? Tracy. Hi, Tracy. How Wendy. Are you? Hi, Kieran. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Um, the girl. Oh. <laughs> Hollywood likes you. He just popped the boner uh, <laughs> um, oh, sound for you. Thank the boing. You so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, now, ladies, I have to say the first thing that grabbed me about your book is the fabulous cover. It's a wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the book is called Fab, F-A-B. And it's a novel, and it's a wow. This is a book that you don't tuck away with the rest of your books. You keep it out because it's fab. It's a wow. Good. I love the Thank color. You. I love the diva raising her hands, Diana Ross style on the front. And I understand. I haven't started reading it yet. So, so fill me in with everybody else. Um, it's about four fabulous single women looking for... Um, Love, love, sex, the perfect job, happiness, oh, all of it. So this is like Sex in the City, part but us, but but black people, yeah. absolutely. So it's like girlfriends. You know, it's kind of in the middle. We were trying to find a book that we we decided to write the kind of book that we would want to read. Yeah, so I guess it did end up falling in the middle somewhere between girlfriends and Sex in the City. I that's where we fall. I got to tell you something. You never get tired of this particular topic either. No. You know, or or the scenario <laughs> with all the girls together. I don't care if it's Waiting Exhale, Sex in the City, girlfriends, whatever. Um, so, all right. So there are two other people on this book: Tiffany Anderson and um, Adrian Carter. Yeah. Now, how are the four of you? How did you all come together to write a book? Well, I'd say it's the magic of the internet. Um, yeah, we each took a character. Yeah, it's Tracy talking now. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we each took a character and we wrote what we thought that character would go through. Uh -huh. And the other characters come in to each person's chapter and we'd exchange chapters over the internet and say, what do you think? Would your character do this? Should it be more raw? Should it be more real? Wait a minute, Karen, did you all know each other before this process got started? Sure. Oh, Adrian, okay. And, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no this was not <laughs> sort of yeah, I, th yeah I thought you were, were strangers. No, no, no. Um, Adrian and Tiffany met in high school. Uh, Tracy and Adrian met in college, and I met Tracy in law school. Oh, wow. So, so where did you go to college? Yeah. Duke. Oh, look at these smart women. Look at these smart, wow. fab women. Wow. Even with all this smart and fab, still looking for sex. What is the book? Love. Smart love and and smart guys. But come on, doesn't that tell the story of what we go through? Yeah, it does. You know? Yeah, it does. Sex I mean, isn't so hard to find, but most yeah. <laughs> of it, yeah. Yeah, the, the love part and, and smart guys are hard to find. You know what I mean? Yep. 
who are smart about something other than trying to get over on women. <laughs> you know, all day, every day. So this book is in stores now. Yes, absolutely. And um, it's available everywhere. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who was you, who are you published by? I can't say. Oh, Doubleday. Double mm-hmm. Okay, published by Doubleday. Um, you guys, this is a smart. Nice read. You'll love picking up this book. I'm telling you, it's called Fab, F-A-B. And go to the Doubleday website. You can probably take a look, read a little bit more about what the book is about, right? And we have a website, too. So tell me about the four characters. Tell me your website, and then I want to hear about the four characters. Oh, www.fabthebook, all one word, dot com. Okay, that's Karen. Uh, All right. Um, Karen, continue. Tell me about your character. My character's name is Carolyn. She's Mm -hmm. an advertising executive. Um, And the problem is that she works in a world where the size two is the ideal body image. And she is not anybody's size two. Yes. So she's basically trying to work with her self-esteem issues and basically come to the realization Mm -hmm. that you don't have to be a two to be beautiful. And she's struggling with dating and everything else. But, um, I mean, I think she's like a lot of it. She just got body image issues. And this is a bit of you. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> do you get Botox? Because you say yes, you look like you want to do, but you can't do. Oh, no, I do Okay, okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I was going to say, me too. You, you said yes, like you, you were looking to furl, but you can't furl oh. because you're frozen. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, so this is you. So it was easy to write. Mm-hmm. So um, what is your, uh, Tracy, what is your character? Taylor. Okay. She, she is an attorney. She <laughs> works at a large uh, New York law firm. And she works constantly, leaving her little time to develop any kind of real romance. Now, what do you do in your normal job, in your regular job? Amazingly enough, I am an attorney. Oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And and um, Karen, you still you're practicing? So, yes, absolutely. Good. And what do the other two girls do? Um, they're writers for the NBC show Las Vegas. Okay. And they used to write for Eve. Nice. All right. Now, tell me about the other two characters. Tiffany, what is what is her character? She wrote Bianca, and Bianca has left New York to go out to the West Coast, okay. and she gets totally sucked into the superficial lifestyle. It matters what you wear. It matters where you get your hair done, what you drive, um, and she starts basically living beyond her means in a big way and ends up, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you how it ends up, but basically she's headed for disaster. She does some shady stuff to get by. Mm-hmm. And what about Adrian? And Adrian's character is Roxanne. Roxanne is a struggling actor trying to make it, tired of being broke, Mm -hmm. and trying to establish a relationship with a guy who ends up not really wanting to have sex. So, yeah. Is he gay? No, they do have sex, Uh but uh, he has a little crisis. And a penis crisis? Yes, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> Don't say too much because we want people to... Be- Already... Have- oh, by the way, Jonathan got $50,000 from the Terry McMillan law, um, divorce. Oh, yeah, yeah, really? you know, Yeah, $50,000. I just found that an hour ago. Are Did you he? kidding yeah. me? Yeah, so she won, in other words. He, 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 there's no alimony. But, but the thing about it is to get anything at all, come in with what you go out with. Did I say that right? Go you, out with you got, you got, you got to pay. You got to pay the price of being... Not aware. I don't want to say stupid, but we all saw Jonathan. Hello, Kieran. I see you over there. The body language. You saw him coming in the door. $50,000. She got over. (laughs) Dumbass mistake like that. And then going on TV boo-hooing. And we all saw that. (laughs) Miss Honey came in switching. Anyway, girls. Let's talk about you (laughs) and your your, um, books. All right. It's called Fab. I encourage everybody to go out and get this book. Ladies, you will love this book. You just heard the four characters done by apparently four very smart women. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Doing it. Yeah. And writing from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. I think it speaks to us. It's it's real. Do any of the women have kids? Oh, real quick. No. No. Any of the women ever been married? No. No. Any of the women lesbians? Oh. No. no. But that's an interesting but, idea but for the sequel. But what does date a gay man? Oh, well, that happens every day. It's called (laughs) Fab, everybody. It's in bookstores now. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy will... Rachel, everybody plays Mona on Half and Half. So how are you doing um, as a single woman in Hollywood? Do you live in a condo? Do you have a detached house? Um, No, I actually just bought my first house. Pool in the back? You know what? I don't have a pool. I'm going to put one in. I don't have a pool. And I thought, should I get one? Then I realized you don't go in no damn pool. Do you have five on it? I can't say that. Okay. (laughs) We'll take that as a yes. Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs>
Yeah, everybody. I know this is the last hour of the show today. And um, we've got to get a couple of things accomplished this hour. First of all, the actor Gerard Depardieu knocked a photographer out. And LeBron James has been hospitalized. But I wanted to get to this first. You know, um, yesterday, C. Dolores Tucker died. Um, you probably saw it on your news, but in case you didn't, um, she died yesterday of undisclosed causes um, in her, excuse me, in actually in Norristown, Pennsylvania. Did you realize that she lived in Pennsylvania, Art? Yes. Is she from Pennsylvania? I don't know, but she's cool with my people's. Would your peoples be your mother? Yeah. Why do people call their... You know, when people are near and dear to you, why do you call them peoples? I'm sorry. Is it that you don't want to share that emotion with the listeners or something? Probably. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But she left me a message on my voicemail like two minutes after she died. Yeah. She, she, she was with her. She passed... Your mother was with her? At the hospital, yeah. Seriously. I left my phone at home so I couldn't get the message after I got home last night. Your mother was really close to her. Yeah, it was cool. Or was she doing show research? No, she was cool. No, seriously, she was cool with her. Well, did they go to the same church? No, but they hung out. Wow. Was C. Dolores there when Lola Falana would come in after being beat up by Sammy Davis Jr.? They don't go back that far. Oh, okay. No. Well, C. Dolores Tucker was 78 years old, and, you know, she was a political activist and a longtime opponent of gangster rap. Boy, did she kick up some dust in her later years regarding rap, she always felt that um, the gangster rap was, um, you know, in, in its current form is uh, the absolute geno genocide of black America. She also um, participated in Dr. King's march from Selma to Montgomery back in 1965. So she has roots deep in civil rights and um, she passed away yesterday. C. Dolores Tucker. Well, if your mother knows her so well, what does the C stand for? She probably knows, but I never asked her. I just know Tupac wrote a song about her. <laughs> she, and how did that song go? I, I, I forgot the lyrics, but you know what you want to talk about. You know the record he said he, he talked about on there. I want to hear you sing it. I don't know the lyrics. Mm -hmm. I, I can get the record for you. That's okay. I got my... Uh, she, tried, she tried to sue Tupac saying that, you know, her husband didn't want to look at her the same way after the song. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Come on, I remember that. We could have this conversation two weeks from now. Huh? Yeah, we can revisit it. I mean, you know. Yeah. Or maybe a month from now. Okay. Because I got a few guesses as to what the C stands for. Right. Okay. I I'll ask tonight, as a matter of fact. Because I never asked. Oh, I'm going to write it down. Stop it easy. <laughs> and the C is for... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Tears of a clown, tears of a clown. Okay, let me move on. Is the funeral going to be in Philadelphia? I got the message. I didn't even talk face-to-face -to -face with my mom yet. The question on the, the Wendy Williams Experience website is, do you care about the Million More March coming up this weekend? Is that something that you're participating in? Are you mentally there? It's just that physically, physically you can't be there? Do you feel as though it's a big waste of time? Um, what do you feel about the Million More March? What I, um, I'll share with you some thoughts that I have concerning it. Um, and, and one of those things is that um, the very people, perhaps, that the march needs to affect will not be the ones affected. You know, there'll be a lot of networking down there. It'll be a chance for, you know, um, well-placed or, or moneyed black people to network with one another and get this deal solidified once they get back to L.A. or New York or Chicago or wherever they're from. Um, it'll be a chance to um, I just don't feel as though it will. It, I don't feel as though the knowledge will stick and properly trickle down to people who really, really need to heed the message. <clears throat> Us regular, everyday, like, working people who maybe as women we're out here having too many kids because this march is not just about men. It's the million more march. It's, it's encompassing we're having too many kids where the men are sloppy with the penis, sloppy, you know, 
men not holding up their part of the bargain of what it is to commit to a woman. You know, men scared of men. It all comes back to you, men. You know, and then you wonder why a black woman's frustration and anger is the way it is sometimes. Black women, you know, maybe there's something more that we need to be doing or whatever. I just feel as though it. I understand the premise, valiant effort, go team, but I feel as though the message is like lost. And the first million man march, I see what they're trying to do. You see what they're trying to do. They're trying to create the essence of that. That was done once. I imagine that was done well. I do recall uh, knowing several brothers who went down to the Million Men March and they heeded not for about six months and went back to the same damn ways they were. So what the hell? And the, and the good men that were good before they even went to that march, that march didn't affect them one way or the other because they stayed on the same path of being good men. The, I'm talking about, you know, the Million Women March. I mean... I didn't even. That was a big fest. Yes. I mean, I, I, uh, yes. I know some women who uh, went, and I also saw the pictures. Yes. I could be wrong. Of course, I could be. Of course. Let's get on the phone. Did anybody go to the Million Woman March? How you doing? <laughs> hey, hello. 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 Miss Honey. Hello, hi. Um, I was asking, it's, you're on the radio, it's Wendy. Um, what are your thoughts on the Million More March this weekend in Washington, D.C.? They're listening to the radio. So busy listening to the damn radio. What, school is out? Kids are playing on the phone? Hello. Hello, hi. I'm sorry. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi. Hi, so I was asking um, your thoughts on the Million More March. And by the way, did you go to the Million Women March? Actually, I didn't. I didn't even know about it. That's oh. bad. Yeah. No, the Million Woman March happened years ago. Remember Jada Pinkett Smith looking her? I think her. it's a good thing. Yeah. It should have been happening. Yeah. Women tend to stick together more than men anyway. Yeah. I think it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, now, if you can turn your radio down, then we can concentrate on our conversation, though. Um, I was asking you about the Million More March this weekend. The Million <coughs> what? The Million More March is what happening. What is that? Well, Farrah Khan is leading the charge. Um, a lot of the leaders in the black community, including Russell Simmons, um, will be down there this weekend. You know, he's bringing, you know, some of his, his you know, influential, you know, brother men, men. And um, women are invited in this one also. That's different. Well, it's the same premise, though. Um, you don't have any thoughts on it? I just think it's a good idea. I mean... It's just a good idea. Okay, thanks. Have the men and women together. Okay, thanks for calling. Okay. She was busy listening to high sound on the radio. <laughs> Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi. Hi. Oh, I was calling. Yeah, it's Wendy. Oh, hi. Hi. I was calling, um, I mean, excuse me. I was asking uh, what you thought about the Million More March. Oh, oh. I was calling, um. Okay, me. okay, bye. No, just, hang just hang up, just hang up, just hang up, just hang up. All right, apparently you guys don't care, and not, not for nothing. <clears throat> and that's fine. I just want to know where you're at. So you can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, if you'd like, and just answer yes or no. Do you even care about the upcoming Million More March this weekend? In the meantime, that new show, Freddie, that, um, that we got the telephone call about yesterday on ABC, well, a production assistant has confirmed uh -oh. anonymously... That Freddie Prince Jr. Uh oh, no, stop it. Easy, easy. <laughs> no, he's not that honest. Oh, okay. He's still in a charade. Yes. As a matter of fact, he's building his beard. Oh. Because now it's not just his wife's chair, Michelle Geller. Apparently, there's something definitely romantic going on between Freddie and his co star, Jacqueline Obradors, who played Detective Rita Ortiz on NYPD Blue. Here's what the production assistant shared with my fabulous gossip friend Jeffrey Wells from Hollywood. Here's the quote. It's strange because on the show, Freddie and Jacqueline play brother and sister. This is on the new Freddie Prince sitcom on ABC, which debuted last night. So they don't have any romantic scenes, but once the camera's off, they're flirting and hugging, and then they disappear in a Freddie's dressing room alone. Sarah Michelle Gellar 
has been there three times, and I know Sarah has heard the rumors that these two are romantically involved. She actually went up and talked to Jacqueline, and they seemed okay with each other, but Freddie came to join them, and Sarah got nervous because Jacqueline said something to Freddie in Spanish, and Freddie laughed. Sarah just felt left out. Well, that's how it is sometimes. When you, when you cross the barriers... You play like your Don Quixote if you want. You ain't nothing but a new. Ooh. And when you get around and they start talking that secret language, you ain't nothing but a new. Ooh. I'm talking to you, Arthur. I know you are. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> and pointing my finger. There's no TV yeah. cameras in here. Because you know Art now says, what do you say you are now? My name is Chico and I'm Dominican. Exactly. <laughs> Always wanted to be everything but black. And you get up with a Dominican girl, as beautiful as they are. And you get in a room with her and the family at Thanksgiving. And they start the... Blah, 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 and you hear Splabu. It's already happened. Oh, it has? Oh, Arthur. Oh, Arthur, I didn't know. You've been whispered behind your back and felt left out? Yeah. 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 So, although you long... Yeah, but, she, but she told me what, what was at, what was said about That's what she, That was her interpretation. She's protecting you, Arthur. No, they no no no. Arthur, she, you ain't she nothing said my but a aunt, nigga. She said my aunt asked if you were gay. Ah! <laughs> because she hears her aunt hears the show. Ah! My aunt wanted to know were you were you gay in real life? Did your aunt t- teach you how to say how you doing in um? No, no. Somebody around here did a long time ago. I forgot though. Remember I did it to you? I forgot. Lourdes is still here. Yeah. Is Lourdes still here? Did she go she's home? Still, she's still here. Hey, Lourdes, how do you say? How you doing? In Spanish. In Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You see what Sarah Michelle Geller is going through? Yeah, I feel her. At the end of the day, Freddie Prince Jr. is Spanish, and he is connected with his Spanish co-star. Yeah. And she's a little. Uh, oh, oh, she's a white girl. No flavor. Mm-hmm. You know nothing. Yeah. No rhythm, no flavor. You know, she is far from being Aubrey for making it a band. Who, by the way, I think should win. Oh, Aubrey's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The other day I said I didn't watch making it a band this season, but I didn't realize that it's a rerun of a lot of the girls who were on last season. Aubrey's hot. Aubrey needs to win making it a band. She looks nice. She sings well. She drops it like it's hot. Yes. The Sarah Michelle Gellar is no Aubrey. No, no. And Freddie went back home. And Freddie went back home to what he's familiar with. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the demise of the Puffy and Jennifer, too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I think about that. Puffy get over to Jen's house. Old Guadalupe would be yippity, yippity, yipping. They all yipping behind Puffy's back. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jen gets on the phone there at the compound. Puffy's sitting right there. He's being talked about right in front of his face. He don't know for nothing. He's on his two-way arguing with Kim Porter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's a mess. What a tangle web we weave. As soon as we pull up, he needs... You know what? Sex complicates everything. I don't know what that has to do with anything except for I'm really upset. I really want to watch this Freddy show now, though. I'll tell you what. This is the kind of action that I need to zhuzh up business. Over at the show, I'm watching this show. I want to see their body language and how they all mm, communicate. Wendy, man. I've been with this guy for like five years, and I know you say don't cheat. I know, but I can't help it. I want to. Do you have intention on getting married? We're married. Oh, my God. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 107.5 WBLS with the return of the $107,000 cash guarantee. Back by popular demand, it's your chance to pick up an easy grand. $1,000 winners throughout the day. Set your radio to wake up and get paid on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And listen for Steve to give you the cue to call in to win each morning at 7.15 a.m. Then listen for Steve again at 12.15 and then again at 5.15. Be the 10th caller and you're an instant winner. That is crazy. It's a $107,000 cash guarantee on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. 
Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. Come and get this money, y'all. We got it for you cash. Be caller number 10 at 212-545-1075. $1,000 right here from 107.5 WBLS. Hmm. Ow. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, everybody. Hey, hey, hey now. This hour of the experience is brought to you by multiple... Excuse me, Municipal Credit Union, MCU. MCU. Oh, wait. Money. I have to go to the phone. Yeah. All right, let's do a call number one. Come on. Hi, you're calling number one. Call back. Hi, WBLS, you're calling number two. WBLS, you're calling number three. WBLS, you're calling number four. WBLS, you're calling number five. WBLS, you're calling number six. And you're calling number seven. Call back. Number eight. You're calling number eight. Hold on, hold on. All right. You're calling number. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you're calling number eight. WBLS, you're calling number nine. And Cha-ching. WBLS, you are caller number ten. Oh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I was hoping I could get a chance to talk to my girl, Wendy. Well, good. Listen, we can chat. Let me just give you the, the uh, results of your telephone call. Okay. Uh, well, you just picked up $1,000 in WBLS cash. Okay. Yes, that is your cha- share of our $107,000 cash guarantee. Oh, wow. Everybody else, you make sure that you're listening tomorrow morning at 7.15 a.m. with my man and yours, Steve Harvey from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And he's uh-huh. going to have your next chance to win. Then again tomorrow afternoon at 12.15 with Mark Jordan. And then all over again with me this time of day. So what's your name? My name is Charlene Johnson. And where are you calling from, Charlene? I'm calling from Patterson, New Jersey. Fabulous, Charlene. <laughs> Congratulations. And let us know your station giving away the money. W-B-L-A. No, Goose. I, oh, I want to talk to Charlene. Oh, I thought you were going to hang up. Okay, Charlene. All right, now we'll switch gears. What are we talking about? How you doing? Hey, I was listening to you right here talking about that Million Man March thing. Yeah, Charlene. Let me tell you, I think it's a waste of time. Mm. It seems like to me, I, I'm sorry, but that's just the way I feel. Like, it's just the rich getting richer. Because nothing has changed. The brothers are still doing the same dirt they've been doing. They stopped for like three, four months, and they're right back to it. I don't even think this march is going to be effective to get them to stop. Because three or four months was when they had the Million Man March. I know. Remember? What you mean. All the brothers stopped, just, you know, stopped, and they were good men. Yep, that's and they, what I'm saying. they went right back to the same dirt. This, this march doesn't seem to have the impact. And. And I have to agree. You know, it's kind of like the, the vendors and things like that. The vendors and also um, the, the money men um, yeah. who are participating in this or being paid to participate. And I don't Between know that for show. You, but Wendy, mm-hmm. I just want to tell you this. What? I was dating a Muslim brother under Farrakhan. He okay. treated me like dirt. Mm-hmm. Oh, I you told know this I'm story saying? before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he treated me like dirt. We just broke up like about four months ago. Okay. And I, and I used to tell him right to his face, you know what? You're a hypocrite. I said, you tell people one thing and you do another. And that's what he's doing. So we're finished for good. That was my second time being with him. We're finished. It's a whole bunch of hoax. I'm telling you like it is. It really is. Are you sure? I wouldn't even go. I wouldn't even go to that march. I would not go. Do you think it's, it's a just, waste of time? Do you think it's just more important that people stay home and take care of the gates around their house? That's what I think. And, and their immediate family? Yes. And somehow through that, we can have a better... Um, society of people. That's of, what uh, I people. believe, Wendy. That's what I believe because I'm like I'm telling you, just running down there, it's just a thing for show. Yeah. It's a thing for show, honest. I be listening to your show all the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> honest, I do. I be like, that's my girl. Wait till I tell my daughters I got through. I can't believe it. And the big, I'm so excited. And the biggest part is that you're leaving with $1,000. I can't believe it. It pays to listen. I, I tell you it does. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Kiki. And listen, thanks for your honest opinion on the Million More March. That's what, um, you know, we kind of got sidetracked today, but I really wanted to talk to you guys about that. And please go to the website at thewendywilliamsexperience.com and okay. answer your yes or no, and then we'll talk more about it tomorrow. Charlene, congratulations. Thank you. And thanks for being here. Thank you. Goose, I'll take somebody else, and then um, we can continue with the commercials and stuff because I have to make sure I go to the bathroom everything before the bonus hour comes on. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. So what are you calling about? I'm calling, no. Because uh, Steve Harvey told me to call. I'm driving the bus from New Jersey Transit right now. Oh, no, yeah, no, Charlene from Patterson just won. 
Oh, man. Damn. What are you trying to keep your voice down because you're stopping for the people? Yeah, man, I got people on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you listening. Man, Wendy, and as many times I'll be trying to call you. Oh, well, damn. You finally answer while I'm riding down the street. You're oh. about to get suspended. Oh, okay, were you here um, last hour when the authors came in? Yeah. The, the, would you like me to send you a copy of their book? Sure, it's, why not? It's called Fab. It's a novel, and it's really good looking. And all right, hold on for a moment. And Stephanie, um, where where did Dom um, Dominico? She's taking the calls in the next room. Okay. Well, we're gonna put you on hold. Okay. She's on hold. Driver. Okay. Uh, I'll get it. Okay. Yeah. Art. You know what? We have a plethora of those books um, in the back. So remind me. I want to give some away. Okay. Um, in the, in the bonus hour and some away in our next break, okay? But I got to go to the bathroom right now. Um, so we're going to continue with this break and um, I think we're going to get to some music and then we'll come back. And it's the Wendy Williams experience. We're here until 7 o'clock. It's 107.5 WBLS. This is right. It's the Wendy Williams experience still on. Shout out to Bunny B who says, Wendy, please, this is just my opinion. Anyone 30 or older, whether male or female, just think about it for a minute. Back in the 60s and 70s, most women were forced to marry men. Their parents told them to marry or else. Women were raped by their fathers, their uncles, their siblings. Women had sex had sex with two partners and got pregnant and had to marry the better of the two. All this in mind, the babies took the names of the man with the ring. Do not open up a can of worms if you are not ready to eat them. Please, if it were me, I would be ready to eat it. I hope you don't end up being Wendy Matumbo. Oh. <laughs> well, you want to know what? My husband's ready to eat the worms, you know, because the fact of the matter, in its most basic form, there are health issues. Like, you want to know what your health lineage is. Um, and we've, we've explored, the two of us and, there's, and him as an individual, um, all of the, the various possibilities. And I brought up the rape word. And, and here's the deal. He's ready. He just wants to know. <clears throat> who his biological father is and why it is that, you know, he's 30 something years old and this is such a secret. Um, his brother and his sister know who their respective fathers are. You know, his younger brother has one father, his older sister has another father and Kevin is odd person out. And while I'm not in this position directly, I mean, imagine what it's like not knowing where the hell you're from. And many of you already have this, you know, I've gotten the faxes, the emails, the, the behind the scenes, telephone calls, the on the radio telephone calls. There's so many people who go through this every day. And some people choose not to want to know. He wants to know. Mostly because it was last week that this all unfolded. He didn't ask for any of it. It just kind of unfolded. I don't want to go into the details. I'm out of respect. But it is unfolded. You know, and it's now the end of this week. And it's still shroud in secrecy, like like nobody wants to talk. And so the, the secret is the thing that makes you really want to know. Yeah. More so than whether you're going to embrace the man as your father or not. I mean, so he's taking, he wants to take one step at a time. But he is from Brownsville, Brooklyn, and his name is Kevin. He takes the name Hunter because that was the name that he was given. But Mr. Hunter is not his father. He knows that. He is not not his father. So who is? That's where I come to you all. Shout out to Brooklyn. Does somebody know something? You can get at me at my new email that has just been set up today. Not specifically for this, but I asked Art, you know, to set me up an email. So my email is wendy at the wendy williams experience dot com. It's so easy. I don't know how to check them, but I'll have Art or maybe one of the interns, um, you know, or maybe my son, Kevin, uh, pull them pull them out for me tomorrow. If there's anything that you know, please help out. The holidays are coming. Christmas won't be the same scene. Oh. Speaking of holidays, Faith is doing a holiday CD. It'll be out on October 25th. 
Why are you doing that? Just because you wanted to? Do you care? Yes. You don't listen to the classics? No, well, I do. Okay. And the only thing that I don't listen to out, outside of the classics, like the Jackson 5 CD and stuff, um, I like samplings of the Christina Aguilera Chris, um, Christmas CD. And I love Mariah Carey Christmas CD. That is, those are the only two up to date artists that I listen to. Although Tony Braxton put one out years ago, and I never heard it. I never heard it. So you know, please, I skip over the Christmas music even in holiday time here on the radio. I mean, you know, here in New York, <clears throat> the other stations, you know, probably play the Christmas music, but you know, I skip over it. Whitney Houston. Yep. She has a CD out too. Yep. No, I know, but I don't listen to Whitney Houston's Christmas CD. I, I don't. I don't want to open up my whole Christmas catalog to be all update people. As much as I respect and love, you know, the divas, Faith, and, and whatnot. At Christmas, Christmas to me is bringing back to what I listened to when I was a kid at Christmas. What my parents had uh, there on the hi-fi. Oh, you like <laughs> a Nat traditional King Christmas? Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole that's Alvin, right. Alvin and the Ooh. Chipmunks. That would be, you know, laugh, but that was the one Bing, kitty CD. Yeah. Bing, Bing Crosby. <clears throat> there you go. Well, no, no. Not, not, not Bing Crosby, but <laughs> not in the Williams household. Um, but maybe we'll, in the Wellington household, we'll start something new. There you go. There you go. The Wellington. In the Montumbo household oh. or the Carringtons, whichever name we go with. Yes. <laughs> Once we figure out who is that. Montumbo Carrington. M <laughs> Wendy Wellington. Matumbo Carrington. Oh. Williams. Williams. No, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams Wellington. Oh, my gosh. Mm. This high, yes. That's bomb worthy. Oh, yes, it is. Wendy Williams Wellington. Chip and W then. Quite frankly, I like Hunter because you want to know what? It's not that. It's, it's the traditions that you start now by being a man in your own household, and he's a good man, and by being a good father to your son, and he is. I mean, you know, everybody comes with flaws. You know, including him. But, you know, the hunter is what you make it. And and it is what it is. Yeah. But I do like Wellington for the for the record. Yeah. Kevin Wellington, Wendy Wellington. See, I only like that because it rhymes with me best. If I just thought about that, it would be Kevin Carrington, Wendy Carrington. I can go with Carrington. Matumbo's out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want my son to get a job. I want him to get into a good school. <laughs> right now, he, you know, he's applying for first grade. He's only in kindergarten. I'm like, well, what the hell do I put for his last name then? Yeah. You know, with all this up in the air. and It is what it is. Everybody's got problems. Good. No more simple life. Good. Paris and Nicole can't get their act together, oh. so Fox has pulled the plug. Good. In the meantime, Tommy Lee was burned on Wednesday by the pyrotechnics, Michael Jackson style. It happened at a Motley Crue concert in Wyoming. He was taken to the hospital, and um, he wasn't badly burned, but he was taken. And Tom Cruise's father is upset that Katie's pregnant. She, he's not happy at all, because they are strict Catholic people, and they're not thrilled that their daughter's involved with a man who's involved with a controversial religion, A, and B, is now pregnant out of wedlock. And Martin Holmes is his name, and he's very upset, according to InStyle magazine. Close friends um, of, of Tom Cruise say Tom had promised her parents that they would do the right thing and marry before a baby came along. Alas, Martin Carrington is probably ca cashing that million-dollar check, and he feels confused. Do I complain? Or do I turn the other way and look at my beautiful new phantom? <laughs> you know? Oh, it's such a crazy world. People think that money is the um, is the end all and be all. And you know what it's about at the end of the day? Family. And on that note, I love you for listening today. God willing, we'll talk tomorrow. Bye-bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. All right. Oh. Come on, stuff. <laughs> All right.
You say it, Art, because you say it real good. Como esto? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you do it again. Como esta? There you go. It's even better. You die, Goose. You do it, Goose. No, good, no, good, no, good, no, good, no, good, no, good, no, Goose. No, good, no. Goose. Come on, Goose. No, I, I, I pass. Now you just say how you do it. How you do it? No, you say it the way we say it. Drag it out. Yeah. How you do it? Now you no, go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. Sorry. Oh, man, what the heck? Como estas? No, he didn't say it. No, he didn't no. say it. No, it's no. like saying, how you doing? Yeah, we'll break him in soon enough. We'll get him. <laughs> if we don't, Woody will. <laughs> Everybody keep it where you got it. The bonus hour of the Wendy Williams experience is next on 107.5 WBLS. Hey. Hi, this is Vaughn Harper. Relax with me, weeknights, at our new time, 7 p.m. to midnight on The Quiet Storm as I promise to give you a musical massage right here on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. Cut. Where are we going with this? No, I'm ready. Yeah. You don't like Prince? Uh, uh, it's the bonus hour. He got a hip replacement, though. He's not getting the hip replacement because he doesn't want a blood transfusion. Oh. I can tell you more about it if he would just stop singing and, and jump in and, and if we just... I can tell you about it now. Prince, sit down. 107.5 WBLS. Hey. New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Oh, wow. I'm here. How you doing? <laughs> this is Wellington. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Susie John. Dear Mrs. Hunter... Don't call me that, John. Dear Mrs. Hunter. Hmm. Dear Mrs. Wellington. Hmm. Dear Mrs. Matumbo. Hmm. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Hunter, my sympathy to your husband regarding his shocking news. No matter how old we are and how successful we are or how perfect our lives are going, we are still somebody's child and someone's grandchild. It is such a... Damn you... Let's take a break. Yeah. Thanks, John. We'll be back. 107.5. Yo, peace, y'all. This is Common, and you listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Love y'all you, stay baby. Stay tuned, all right? Love yeah. him. And congratulations, by the way, on landing your movie role. That's why he left um, the Kanye West tour. Common is not on the Kanye West tour. Oh. Yeah, so, because he got a movie role. Uh, the girl who played Blossom, Mayim My, Bialik, Bialik, she just had a baby boy <laughs> with her husband, Michael Stone. <laughs> the baby was born on Tuesday. They're both doing fine. Yeah, she didn't grow, grow up into the best looker. Huh? The shadows are starting to come over the, to my phone now. Oh, no. I gave you all if regarding. Um, yeah, well, it's more now because people heard you kind of break, getting emotional. In the last no, break. you, you. Well, you all. I'm fine. I mean, I've known about this for a few days. You know, I'm a cancer. Once again, that's me. If I'm not laughing, I'm crying or nesting. So Sonia from Cyprus and all of her friends want you to know, Wendy, that they are praying for you. You're having them crying at home. They love you, Sonia. Everyone has your back, it's Sonia. It's another hood tale. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not the only one. Please. She went through the same thing and Did we'll you? be fine. She found her person, I guess, and she's fine. Did you embrace him? I mean, because, you know, you take one step at a time. First, you first you locate dude. Um, but thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sonia. And thank you, everyone else, too. As opposed to, um, if you understand what I'm saying, as opposed to, you know, sending the stories... I wish that the only emails that I got at this point on Wendy, uh, Wendy at the Wendy Williams Experience dot com were real leads to the situation. Somehow I suspect that I won't need any emails because I don't I've been locked in this room for the, for the past five hours. But the phone lines are probably blowing up from from here to there and everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get home tonight. I have a few messages. I'm sure my husband will have an earful for me. I mean, I don't know. I hope for him. 
I hope for him. New York Magazine um, did this article um, on me, and it's now more than an article. It's apparently a, a book. Well, you know, Art, <laughs> when they do these things, they really... I didn't know that they were going to be calling you and calling and calling and calling. They called me last night, too. Fact. Double checking, double checking. Fact checking. Yes. My girlfriend Lisa said that they called her yesterday. Hmm. Fact checking. They had a lot of the years wrong and a lot of the things wrong, and then she had to go back and figure out what she said, and she didn't want to put her foot in her mouth, and... My mother and father said they called the fact check. It's a, it's a big article. I feel very honored. Yes, it's big. And <clears throat> it's going to be in next week's New York Magazine. They got a gaggle of pictures. They wanted pictures of me and my husband, me and my husband and son. Those I didn't give. You know, it's just like, you know, they don't want to be out there like that. And so, you know, what they want, I respect. My mother and father, they wanted a picture of the three of us together. You know, my parents. Ow! Send them! Something where I look fabulous. So, you know, they're in there. I love New York Magazine. I collect them. I collect New York Magazine. I like to look in the back. And the, the, my favorite one to get are uh, a couple of them. The restaurant issue. You know, the best restaurants in New York. That's, that's my go-to guide. I keep them in a bathroom, you know. I have a bathroom with, like, a New York theme. And I keep the magazines in there for, um, you know... Um, reading material, bathroom, I mean, um, restaurants, and also medical, you know, to find out who who the best medical people, you know, in New York. Not necessarily does that make them the best. They could have paid to be in it, but the point is that I like to see all what's it doing. And I like to look at, like, the real estate and stuff, not that I'm thinking about buying anything in New York, but just, you know, to look, to see what you don't get in New York and what you do get in Jersey. Hey, Jersey. It's the best kept secret, isn't it? So LeBron James has been hospitalized for tests. He strained a muscle in his chest and he doesn't know how the injury happened. And here's his quote. I don't remember getting elbowed in the chest or pushed. It was something I never felt. He scored 16 points on Monday night's game against Washington. Did you see that? But they say on Tuesday when they played Pittsburgh, um, um, he didn't play. He was visibly wincing in pain on Wednesday during the workout. And afterwards, he had to get hospitalized. You know what that probably is? You know, you pick up a girl. Yo. Maybe maybe he got the chest, yeah. you know, pulled the muscle in his chest. Mm-hmm. On one of those frontal pickups. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he was being written in the hand on the chest looking down. Yeah, something. He's embarrassed. <laughs> Once again, another question. How did he pull his muscle? Muscle. Another question with the answer shrouded in mystery. Yes. I can't stand the mystery of it all. Can we all just be honest about the important things? No. Gerard Depardieu punched a cop in the face. Oh! <laughs> if Gerard Depardieu and Miyam Bialik had a baby, oh my God. imagine the schnoz on that one. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> It's Frightful when yes. Halloween came very early this year. I know, Mark. By the way, Mark happens to be the first cousin of Jonathan Plummer, Terry McMillan's ex-husband. They're officially exes. Would you like to hear what um, Jonathan got? Timbali, please. Oh, here you go. $50,000. Oh, my gosh. That's it. So Terry won. All of that searching for money that um, Jonathan was doing was for a mere $50,000. And um, just bear in mind, men, if you marry a woman and then you somewhere during the marriage, according to how Terry said it went down, turn gay, you get no love in the court system. As well, you shouldn't. You were deceiving. But my thing is that Jonathan wasn't deceiving. You know what I mean? But, you know. Because I'm a woman, I'm glad that the woman won. But I like Jonathan still. And I would love to have a conversation with him on the phone, nevertheless. Just to find out, you know, what all was going on. Was Mark there at court? How did Terry look in court? Oh, there you go. You know? Frightful, <laughs> Halloween came very early this year. But... <laughs> Apparently, it was an Italian photographer. He was knocked out by the French star Gerard Depardieu after he snapped Gerard's picture while Gerard was shopping in Florence. It was on October 3rd. 
the photographer who was left unconscious was actually not punched in the face. He was headbutted. Oh, Boy, that is a savage way of taking someone out, isn't it? Oh. A headbutt. And then Gerard threatened, um, did, wait, threatened him verbally with more um, stuff and defamation and whatnot. So, you know. Prince, I was talking about him earlier. Uh, let me just, you know, for you purple people, let me just wrap up this story because I know you won't be able to sleep tonight. So a few days ago, I was saying that Prince <clears throat> has been in a lot of pain recently. The discomfort has been brought on by years of, you know, performing in the heels and doing the splits. And, you know, he's an amazing dancer. And now he's 47 years old. And... He's thinking twice about getting full hip replacement because even though that's what's needed, he's a Jehovah's Witness and he's against blood transfusions. Um, and that would be part of the hip replacement operation. Um, so he's taking medication right now to temporarily hold things off. Let's talk to people. I don't want to get out of here without talking to people. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm all right. Um, I just wanted to know if you're still offering the book, the Fab book. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, for the uh, um, first five people to call right now, I'm going to give you copies of our guest from today's new book called Fab. It is a it's about four black girls and it's a sex in the city type of thing. So you got one. Put her on hold. Dominique, you got everything? Okay. Hello. Hi, hi, it's Wendy. Would you like the book, or do you want me to put you on hold and have a conversation? Yes, yes. Good evening, Wendy and company. Okay. Oh, that used to be the name of my old morning show when I did mornings at um, the Lips Station, Wendy oh, and Company. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. It was just me and Skeletor. Right. Mm -hmm. I hold on. The rest of it, I was going to, you know, try to judge up as... Yeah, put him on hold. Okay, good. <clears throat> That's two. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Would you like to get the fab book? Yes, I would, Wendy. Okay, and you're calling number three. Hold on. And you are calling number four for the Fab book. Would you love that? Yes, I would. Okay, great. And you're calling number five for the Fab book. And Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. You got the book. Okay. Hi, Wendy. No, I don't want to. I don't want to book. I just want to tell you that. I, ooh. Okay. How that, you doing? I just wanted to say, hey, doing? listen. I absolutely love your show. Thank I've been you. listening to you for like two years. Ever since I heard you tell a story about hitting a woman in the face with your um fur, <laughs> I've been dying laughing because I do that to people all the time. Oh yes. So I, I just I absolutely adore you. And I happen to see what's her face, Naomi <laughs> Campbell, on Oprah today. Yes. She was straight crazy, tripping all over the place, falling all over um what's my call it, Iman. What, what is wrong with her? I, I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And last week, you hushed somebody up real quick when they was about to go into a story about John Travolta. Uh, yes. Yeah, what I, is that about? Because you put the hush on and y'all played some sound effects. Because they were going to go too deep. I did a blind item. The blind item was him. And then it, it's basically a how you doing. I thought everyone knew. Ah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. I want to shout myself out. Hey, Beatrice. What's up? All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wendy. I love you. Thank you, B. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. And you're calling number five. We'll give you a book, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Hold on. All right. That's enough with the phones because now... Hey, make sure that Dominique understands. Is the radio on there in the broken fax room? Yes. Check one, check two. Dominique, tell everybody they have to come up here and pick up their books. We don't have stamps here. We have to use the stamp money. She's waving her head right now. To Let's buy see. some... I need wheat bread. I need wheat bread. You need wheat bread? Shh, I'm Vander Camping. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Vander Camping. Going to... Going to... The tumble. Or whoever I am. Oh. As long as it's not Jones. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> as long as I got a choice, it will not be Williams, Jones, or Jackson. <laughs> Wendy, do you know what happened to Sinbad the Comedian? Yeah, he tried to do a morning show in L.A. He got beat badly by Steve Harvey. Sinbad is a nice guy. I like him. But, you know, not everybody is, uh, you know, people think they can just step into my profession and just do the damn thing. And then, you know, keep the blow up going after that. But first you have to be good at it before you can continue. Yep, that's the book. Give away a signed copy. No, we gave away five of them. I signed it. I'm not the author of the fab. Why would Wendy sign somebody else's book? She has her own books. Oh, 
are you hire the interns? Why do you have to be so shady to them? And then he says things, and then he lets his bottom lip droop like a real because why you, queen. You're off of yourself. You got your own books with an S. She didn't sell somebody else's books. She got her own books and a third one coming out. Shut up. We're talking on the rise. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look how he's looking at her. <laughs> Well, they don't know. They, I mean, uh, I guess they—they um, they signed it already. I guess. It's yeah. Okay. Just exactly. Office. Just just make sure five of them stay in the office, and the listeners are going to come pick them up. Okay. El, Dominique, tell them they can only come during the Wendy Williams Experience show hours. Yeah. Look, you can read her her lips. Look at them soup coolers. <laughs> you can only come during the Wendy. <laughs> she's telling them. Now she's trying to hide her lips. Don't try to hide your lips. You black. <laughs> Woo, who's in the basement? Well, it's a black man over at Desperate Housewives. But McKeed uh, Brooks, is that how you pronounce his name? M- McKeed Brooks? Well, he says, um, first of all, here's a little bit about him that you didn't know. His favorite thing about Desperate Housewives is that he doesn't have to dribble a basketball. He's had to do that all his life. He's six foot three. He did get a basketball scholarship, but he turned it down for the University of Southern California. Um... <clears throat> he will turn 25 on October 25th. This is, he plays Matthew, you know, um, the black family on Wisteria Lane. He was born in Austin, Texas, and he's the son of a professional football player and a journalist. And he says acting is his passion. He loves Desperate Housewives, and um, he worked as a model to pay part of his tuition. Who is his father? Any Tony Dorsett type? If the father was famous, he would have said it. Or maybe he doesn't want his father. Maybe he wants to make it on his own thing. Maybe his father's caught up in some mess. Uh-oh. Maybe his father hangs out at Eddie Murphy's house. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm at the bottom of my pile. Information dispensed? Yes. Time to clean up? Time to go. Gosh, you know what? I never work my way to the bottom of my pile. Look how nice my desk looks under here. Mm-hmm. Every day I leave here, I always have more crap. Look. Yeah. The bottom of the pile. It would have been perfect if it was Friday. No, I'm vander camping my way through oh. the show. Oh. Can, do, can do, can do, can do, can do, can do. Mm-hmm. I might have to start checking into therapy again, just maybe once a week, just to, you know. You know what I mean? But right now, you're the therapist at this point. Uh, the therapist needs to talk to somebody, too. Oh. In addition, the holidays are coming. People are coming for Thanksgiving. Christmas. Oh, my mom and dad. And, you know, my sister. And, you know, they're all coming. Christmas. <sighs> They'll all be in Miami. We were supposed to be making Christmas here. It'll be the three of us. We'll probably go visiting. Yeah. We'll probably go to somebody's house visiting for Christmas. <laughs> Dons and Divas, though, is like four days before Christmas, so we'll probably still be recovering. Oh, you don't want to know. This Don's and Divas next party is going to be sick. For those of you who are not familiar, this is Don's and Divas 6. Don's and Divas are legendary for celebrities and fabulous people, and that means you, the listener. Everybody's been to Don's and Divas from Little Kim. Did I know you and Little Kim and Usher and Queen Latifah were at Don's and Divas? Yes. And of course, you remember Lisa Ray, and of course, you remember Mackay Pfeiffer, and of course... Um, Red man, all the pop-ups. Red man, just, yeah, people just pop up and show up. Oh, it's just a fabulous party. It's upscale. Everybody's grown. Everybody's sexy. It's been at, the first year we did it, when, when I got back to New York, it was like a sampling to try to figure out how this party's going to go. I think it was at the Robert Treat Hotel. Yes, the second year, it was at Madison Square Garden, in the Garden um, Theater. Um, we tricked it out like a winter wonderland. There was snow, soup to nuts, fabulous. I remember um, Jaheim performed, Benzino performed, and, yeah. and some other people. It was, it was really fabulous. Then the third year we did it, it was at um, the Old Bank downtown. What's it called? Was it at the bank? Yes, it was. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. oh, gosh, I forgot the name of the bank. Anyway, downtown fabulous. The fourth year we did it, I think the fourth year was at the bank. 
No, we did. The Copacabana was the third year. Yeah. And there were like 3,000 people there. It was a sea of fabulousness. Remember Wyclef and Claudie came? They were, they, they were wearing the matching chinchillas and whatnot. I mean, just everybody, just the performances. You all really make the party, though. And this year... Um, is uh, then last year it was at Atlantic City the Brigada Hotel and Casino. It's Question Mark Entertainment presents, and then it's you know my my signature party that I host every year, um, and it's called this year it's Don's and Divas Part Six the Black Party, and I mean it's just it's that party. So it's coming. It's going to be. I don't have my book out right now. I have my grocery list in front of me because I got to van to camp through the grocery store and still get home in time to have conversation with Junior, a little bonding time, and then tuck him in. And I got to get my shower in before. Um, oh my gosh, my eyes are starting to pop like my thyroid. Do I look oh, like a mad oh, woman? Do I look oh, like a mad woman? Oh, oh my gosh, I need to calm down. Camp. What? We got this. Go band camp. Mind you, my parents listen online, so everything's unfolding oh. to them as it's unfolding to you. So as soon as I get in the car, I'm going to bring Wendy. Are you okay? No, they won't bring me the drama. They'll just ask me, how are you doing? <laughs> Wendy. And then my father. Wendy, support your husband. You know, stand by your husband. Um, Daddy, I am. But Wendy, how are you doing? Are you fine? Do you want us to do anything? They will be in two seconds. They'll get on their brooms and fly up here. I got to go home. Look, Vaughn is up next with the quiet storm. I love you good people for listening. And, and you know what? It is what it is. It's a mess. And it's the Wendy Williams experience. <laughs> How you doing? All right. Bye. <laughs> Wendy Williams broadcast.